Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Sorgatron Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Hey guys, it's the <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is mayhem, it is wrestling. Probably more of the former than the latter. Uh, but we, show. Got, we got a crazy big show. Uh, Quasi planned for you guys tonight. No, um, it's not. Yes, that's probably more accurate. On the couch, as usual, is the the man who says things. Chachi says, "Chachi, how you doing?" I'm all right. Hey, how are you, Sorg? Good. Good. You weren't this low key like a minute ago. I know. The show started. <laughs> it's over. I Here got, goes your personal. You weren't that Kavala a minute ago either. <laughs> gotta gotta tune it down some. Really? No. For this fuck one? No. no. <laughs> oh, you're lucky. I'm wearing shorts. Oh, and going down the switcher line, and we got no. straight from Corpus Christi, the Wrestle fan. Sorry, oh, Wrestle he's... bitch. <laughs> Sorry, he's on the a... <laughs> <laughs> he's on the bitch of the computer tonight, so he's not looking too good. Wow, well, 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 Wrestle well. fan has a uh, I'm, I'm really gonna camera. steal. What? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Step it on me again. Go ahead, Mike. Go I mean, ahead. literally, he's on the tiniest computer we have here, right here. So that's because um, he has the tiniest. Stuff. There you go. How you doing, Wrestle fan? How, how, how was your trip back from the from Pittsburgh? It's 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 going great. It's been great. I'm here in my uh, abode once again. I don't know if it's a shoddy Wi-Fi uh, no, it's haze, Adobe. but you look high. It's Adobe. It is not your Wi-Fi. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. What? Whoa. Hey. No, I'm joking. I'm getting with you, Zorgatron. Yes, <laughs> it's me, Russ Fan, back on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, and from the Bronx, New York, Mr. Mad Mike, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. I want to give a shout out to one of my friends who doesn't watch wrestling. Shut up. Connie is in the chat room. Shut but she doesn't up. You want turned to me it. down. You no, turned no. me I was turned Shut down. I'm Let giving Mad a Mike shout go. out to my Let friend. Mike she go. said she likes the show and she likes the Everyone TV. steps over everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and from Irish parts, step dancing. From Parts Unknown, Mr. <laughs> DJ Lunchbox. What's up, guys? You're looking you relaxed. Doing? You are relaxed and I am I am I am, I am both electric and I am erect. <laughs> that is because we can't see where his hands are. That is the preferred method of uh, preparation for the wrestling mayhem show. I have a heart on uh the size of an iron rod um and uh I'm very excited. Are you are you watching TV? No. Are you playing video games? <laughs> I can, I can recognize the listen. pose. <laughs> what can you? Is do you hear something? No, no, just the way you're sitting. It looks like there's a TV oh. up oh, no, to, your, the to your right. The TV. The, the, I will admit that there is a TV right here, but that is my computer monitor. Okay. Over here is my laptop. Okay. Which is incidentally resting on top of my other laptop. <laughs> so there's a lot of screens going on here. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I get it. Are wow. you the architect from The Matrix? No. Okay. No, my movie was a lot better. Um, it was called <laughs> Down With Love. And... Uh... <laughs> wow, a Down With Love reference, very nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what sets us apart from the other podcasts on the internet. We are willing to make <laughs> down with love references. There you go. That's the thing. Uh, and new tonight, we have our first musical guest, a muck from right here in Pittsburgh. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm not sure I can follow all those funny erection comments, but you know, <laughs> I'm glad to be on the show, and I'm ready to talk about wrestling and other stuff. I'm sure you'll keep up with them. Listen, all you have to do <laughs> oh. is say you have an erection and you you're you're following. There you go. There you go. I'll do it. Yeah, it doesn't even and, have and to be. And if you don't have an erection, just, just listen to the soothing sounds of DJ Lunchbox for about ten minutes. And oh terrible. yeah, baby, just let the vibrations from my voice work its way <laughs> down into your pants. <laughs> They call me the mildly quiet storm. Wow. Yeah. And, and oh. welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, <laughs> and our illustrious host, Sorgatron, of course. Sorgatron, ladies and gentlemen, give That's it up for me. Hi, hi. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. 
Yay. All right, well, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, as usual. You guys can find us yeah. on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, Wrestling as usual. And uh, uh, at Mayhem Show on your Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you can yeah. also get a hold of us at... <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Where was everybody else at? Uh, I don't know. I didn't. 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670. You guys can also uh, check us out on iTunes, on Blip TV, on Mediafly, on YouTube, and on your Roku box. Leave comments. Subscribe to us. Tell your friends all about it. And you can also check out this show, all those points of contacts, and uh, and some special goal content that, uh, that you can only see on the app. Uh, after the show on the Wrestling Mayhem Show app on your iPhone, uh, iPad, uh, Android devices. It's in the Amazon store as well. That's a dollar ninety nine. Go do, go check it out. Extra stuff, easy access, and it supports the show and keeps us <laughs> doing easy this. access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a fun show. Um, also, we do have plenty of stickers. We just got a new order of stickers because we're gonna be at the Baltimore. Speaking, Baltim- speaking of stickers, if you want your Wrestling Mayhem Show stickers, oh. Lord, where can they? Get their Wrestling Mayhem Show stickers at. You can send a sassy to Wrestling Mayhem sh- stickers care of Sorgatron Media, 1535 Belasco Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA, 15216. That's the self-addressed stamped envelope for you guys. And I'll send you a big line of them like Wrestle fans holding up back go, there. Go take Mike's- these stickers, tag your pro- public property, tag... uh uh, just, inqu- just random people on the street. Take a sticker, stick it to their forehead. Say, "Hey, watch the Wrestling Mayhem show." Look in the mirror. Wrestle fans, wrestle fans. When you go to college, oh. you need to tag every desk that you sit in with a Wrestling Mayhem show sticker. That 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 is possible. That is an even worse and- case of being that podcast kid. It looks like we lost half of our. <laughs> we just lost everybody on Skype. Uh, let's go to. Hey, Matt. Oh, no. Hey, hey, Chachi. While I figure this out, you yeah. want you want to do the Riz mail? The Riz Oh, uh, the Riz Yeah, that's what I said too. Right, hey, you know what? No. Fuck you, Riz. Is everything oh, good? I here? know what his gimmick yeah. is this weekend. Everybody's yes. good. <laughs> I do. We had a hiccup with Skype, but we're rolling with it. You're back. Okay, Riz. Good. All Listen, right. Listen, I would just I would just like to uh, preface this by saying, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> fuck what you say, Riz. We yeah. love our fuck fans. What you fuck say. what you say. But um, WMS. Miss me last week? No. No. I'm oh. sure you did. Yes, I did. But some something... technically he was on last week. Yes. But what? something caught my eye and ears while I was away what? that struck me as odd. As you know, there are riots going on in London and whenever there's a massive catastrophe fuck anyone in the world, it seems everyone wants to have Hulk Hogan in it. <laughs> See WCW, TNA, Nick Hogan. Oh man, I should keep uh, this And also way. Brooke Hogan. This There's w- a lot of Hulk Hogan in Brooke Hogan, if you know what I'm saying. Whoa, uh, whoa. Uh, it, 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 I, I, I am not, that is not 100% inaccurate, okay? Okay. There's a picture uh, circulating the end of the internet of Hulk Hogan's hands on a picture of Brooke Hogan that where they shouldn't be, okay? That's what you're gonna do, daughter, when my penis runs wild on you. Oh, that's wow. just wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> you just yeah. crossed wow. that line. Wow. Well, of course, he's in TNA. They crossed the line. This oh. was the case for the London riots as a radio reporter for some England radio company. The quote that caught my ear was as followed. It doesn't matter if Hulk Hogan's over there body slamming all the youth like I did Andre the Giant, but at the end of the day, we need to grab these kids and shake them. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Hulk Hogan, proponent of baby shaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why go ask Hulk Hogan, who's going to be his Hulk Hogan persona, about serious topics like the riots in London? Simple, it's because he will give you the sound bite that will be played over the airwaves. So here are five situations I want Hulk Hogan to weigh in on, and what I believe he would say. 5. Sugarland Stage Crash. Wow, brother, that stage crashed faster than my son, brother. Well, wait, Ch- Chachi, do you want me to do uh, that? Nope. No. No, 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 no. Let him go. Ch- let him go. No. Let him go. No. Well, Chachi, Chachi, you need to put some effort into this. No. Then you, need to do, then you need to do at least a Hogan voice yourself. No. No. No, no. because right now you're the voice of the Riz being Hulk Hogan. Yeah, no, it's not happening. And this is how good his impression is. Go ahead, Chachi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're like TNA, brother. They get their fan bases' hopes up, brother. 
only to be crushed later, brother. You supposed brother every third word. No, there's two few that's, brothers that's a, in that. That's a pretty time. good Hogan impersonation. <laughs> you gotta throw a dude in. Dude? I like it. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm reading this email as it's written. Okay. In my okay, voice. Okay, okay, Mr. In, in my voice. Okay. I'm not, I'm not acting like, I, I, I am totally against this email. I just want you to know that. <laughs> how did you, how was it that you became the official voice of Riz and then hated Riz in all his emails? <laughs> not all, wait, hold on, wait, not all of his emails. There's just certain ones that I don't all like. All he sends into the show. No, there are just certain ones I don't like, like okay. this one. Okay, like this and one. Okay. one. And the last one, and the one before that. No, the last one I just messed with a little bit because he wasn't there to yell at me for doing it. <laughs> what? The mic. Oh, Number three. Right in front of your mouth. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Number three, Casey Anthony. Oh, brother, Casey got away with murder, brother. Like, my ex-wife got away with three quarters of my money, brother. Note, Casey Anthony could be used interchangeably with O.J. Simpson. <laughs> number two gang beatings in philadelphia if i was in the middle of those gangs i would take the largest pythons in the world brother and i would choke the life out of those kids brother until they turn into a smurf brother <sighs> <laughs> come on Rin, Rin, Rin. 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 you have to with caps you have to with caps <laughs> oh. i want i want a right. smurf brother all right hold all right on. hold on i'll adjust oh. your audio as you go all right, stock market. What you gonna do, brother, when the Dow Jones comes crashing down on you? <laughs> the rips off shirt made out of trash bags. Yes. Uh, do you know how much funnier the rest of the bags. email would have been if you had said it like that the whole time? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that was the only part in caps. Yeah. Too soon? <laughs> sure. Until next time, OMG Stoke Monkey WTF thought he was dead, LOL, oh wait, I thought that dead naked hobo near the tracks smelled like piss and monkey guts. <laughs> Riz. <laughs> Uh, you have to watch last it's week. Piss and monkey guts? <laughs> tense. That's graphic. All right, what LB. We got a very special email here. And ooh, I do. Yay. What? I said, ooh, yay. And I do have the music queued up. Oh, and I know you watched some Black Dynamite before this. Yeah. Now it is it is worth mentioning. I did, I did in fact, watch Black Dynamite to uh, prepare for this email. Okay. So. It's going. All right, all right, let's see here. There we go. Yeah. We can do this without completely cracking up, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Nope, I can't. All right. (laughs) (laughs) What it is, WMS crew? Back again is the head ninja in charge, and I'm still jet lagged from WWE SummerSlam. Last week I kicked TNA in the ass and gave it brain damage. (laughs) Time for WWE's turn. And if you don't like it, Fuck what you you say! say. What you say! (laughs) (laughs) The greatest email of all time. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, um. <laughs> I watched and co-paid for WWE SummerSlam, so you know where this is going. The inexperienced diva versus the experienced diva was okay. He's in the chat room last I knew too, so Alright. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be a little <laughs> Barrett versus Daniel was good. Hopefully their feud continues. The six-man tag was fucking crazy for a quickie. Wow, Kofi, you went from main eventing against Randy Orton to tagging with Choke Morrison. Those smarts stink only Austin, Hogan, and Triple H hold people down. Sheamus versus Henry was smartly done by the WWE. Henry is on a mission to finally be taken seriously with the fans. A loss from the first guy to stand up to him after getting rid of Show and Kane would ruin his credibility. Sheamus had to lose to Henry. Remember, fans, in basic storytelling, the hero must chase the invincible enemy after a loss for the story to be compelling. Orton versus Christian was fucking sick. Seeing Edge was epic, and the match keep the entire house on their feet at every pinfall. Until the main event, everyone was shouting match of the night. Cena versus Punk was 
Mm-hmm. Cena versus Punk? No. Mm-mm. Punk versus Cena. Don't fucking laugh at me, you little cracker ass <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> was in the finish was fucking amazing. Nash owning Punk was epic, and Mexican JBL cashing in his money in the bank and winning was a smart move. The finish was a perfect grand ploy to screw over both CM Punk and Cena at the same time, and it makes so much sense. The only downside I see is the WWE title moving around too frequently. But here are my issues. Number one. WWE what the fuck oh no it's the poop picture shit <laughs> <laughs> that just scrolled down <laughs> WWE fans don't want anything that ain't wrestling related so CeeLo doing two songs was dull as hell and I love fuck you so fuck you CeeLo Number two, since CM Punk's resurgence in the WWE, is it just me or did Cena start to regress? At both pay-per-views now, Cena stops selling as soon as he starts his comeback before the finish. I'm the in-ring storytelling fan and I caught this and it made me think. Made Cena is going to feel inferior to Punk. CM Punk single-handedly challenged the WWE by simply looking out for himself. While good old boy John Cena was all go PG, it almost killed the WWE's credibility. Dear John Cena, if you want to if you want to be a compelling and change WWE for the better, stop being such a pussy and stand on your own two fucking feet. Had to those with excuse for no Joe, no John, no balls, Cena. Fuck what you say, and deep throat an AIDS dick. <laughs> and the picture he includes, as the wolf often does, MySpace. Next time you try to look hot, flush the toilet. And uh, if you're on video, picture. you see why. Um, yeah, I there is poop in there. Dynamite, and I thank you for <laughs> that your was time. the wow. Well, okay, I think I, is that you think that's how he envisions us reading his emails when he writes these. I don't know. I, I I hope so you know, in the future. Yeah. Sorg, huh. Sorg, if if the wolf ever comes on the show, like as an actual <laughs> guest, we need to have him be like New Jack, and every time he speaks, we have that music play. <laughs> it just automatically starts. I yes. can't do it. Just, just oh my. okay. I'll put that like right. As next... soon as you switch over to his camera, the music kicks in immediately. <laughs> uh, as soon as you switch as, away, it I'll stops. get on that as soon after I'm done with the auto tuning the show. Damn it! <laughs> no, we need to auto tune the show. We need to auto tune. Okay, Sorry, that's what I want for my birthday next year. I want to auto tune the man. show. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> what I want for my birthday All this right. year. We got one more from PRK. Uh, hey, I'll do this. I what? want. That's what, that's why I want from the shows for my. You birthday want me to read PRK year. because you always get flustered because of his bad grammar. Uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. His bad French grammar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's bad. He's French grammar. <laughs> Okay, this is from Pierre Calais. Ha, 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 ha. To the WMS Nation. A lot happened at SummerSlam, starting with the Viper getting the World Heavyweight Championship. See if you notice a pattern here. First, Christian got the big gold belt Extreme Rules, which the Viper jumped ship to SmackDown and got in five days. Later, Captain Charisma got back to cap- Capital Punishment over a DQ from Randy, to- and this past Sunday, Mr. RKO got in L.A. In total, there were four title changes between the two. Can this rivalry between the two continue as a marquee matchup for the blue brand? We'll see. As for that Super Cena Punky ending, the King O' Kings wore the stripes for this match and awarded Punky the undisputed spinner belt (laughs) when all of a sudden, Mr. Vinny Vegas himself, Mr. (laughs) Oz himself, Mr. Big Daddy Cool himself, and Mr. Outsider himself, Do we have all none that? other than Kevin Nash, dropped the diesel bomb on Punky, and Alberto Del Nono cashed in the red briefcase to become the new WWE champion in just five seconds. <sighs> I wonder why did Kevin Nash deserve to do this, and why did he come in for it? Maybe it was a case of the click, but it was a scary ending to SummerSlam. Thanks, and I'll see you in a click curtain call later. Pierre K, aka R Tech would try. Did he just refer to the click as if it was a disease? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that, that is clear. That, that, in all offense, it's a fair assessment. Yeah, that's true. That's I mean, true. they did roll with China. They did. <laughs> 
They gave her the click. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. She gave them a bunch of other things that... <laughs> Oh, you know, okay. moving on, moving on. <laughs> hey, we do have one that I, I neglected to read last week. Uh, it was sent to me on Facebook from our good uh, friend, of sh- old friend of the show, Vimmel. Wait, wait, wait. Vimmel. Vimmel. What are you saying? Vimmel, Vimmel. Time for a motherfucking Vimmel. Vimmel! Yes. Um, I guess, again, <laughs> this is dated a week, so um, hope I hope you are uh, all well. Uh, coming to you from the social unrest in London and the fucking scum ruining my uh, city and country. Uh then he goes on. Wait a wait a mock it, Riz. What? <laughs> Riz was mocking it. Oh. Raw was good and I'll be buying SummerSlam. WWE only respects uh buy rates, so please I urge everyone to actually buy this pay-per-view, not stream it illegally. Uh if we uh want the good stories to continue to be supported, then support the show with your dollars. Things are better tonight than yesterday. Hope you're all safe, Vim. And this was of course last Tuesday he sent this. Uh in the in the middle of everything that was going on there. So we hope he's uh safe and everything. Uh, over in London, and uh, and it's good to hear from them. So there you go. Uh, and I think that uh, aside from our our one o a o n report, we are good on the fan mail, right, guys? I believe so. yes, indeed. Excellent. So wrestle fan, take it away <laughs> to the Andy minute. I'm gonna take it. What? what? I'm gonna take it. What? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a Andy minute. Oh, uh, wrestle fans Andy. get erect. So, oh, boy. Uh, any minute for this week. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna start it off with the AON report for this week. Um, uh, Bobby F. J. Town sent in War for Territory Four card. Uh, Psycho Fusion versus Adam Gnostikov. They pick Psycho Fusion. Sherrod Hall versus John McGraw versus Black Lightning for the AON TV title. They split by picking each one. Uh, Marcus Cage versus Justin Starr for the affection of Bobby Frapples. They pick Justin Starr. Ooh, nice. War for Territory stuff. Battle Royal. Winner gets a shot at the t- at the title at Autumn Massacre. Uh, X Man picks Akiba. Drew Shannon picks Man Child. Yes. Uh, and Mike Edwards picks Zach Rain. Zach Rain versus C4 in a strat match. They pick Zach Rain. Colin Blair versus ISP for control of the cartel. Oh no! ISP, ISP's wives and children were killed in the bombing. What the hell? He's, Holy shit. Um, he says he will not pray for Colin Blair because nobody will save him from what will happen to him. They think ISP will win. <laughs> Psychotic Assassins versus the Slip Into It Into It Syndicate for the AON Tag Team Championships. They pick Psychotic Assassins. AON PA Championship for control of AON. Shane Malice uh, champion was represented by Cass Edison versus James Boyd, represented by Otis Hellenbach versus Bam Bam Hassel, represented by AC Norway versus Randall Fairway, represented by Samantha Sanders. Drew picked Randall Fairway, X Man picked Bam Bam Hassel, and Mike Edwards picked Shane Malice. Colin Blair cut a promo saying he didn't bomb ISP's compound. He said the war on terror is on, and he. <laughs> oh my god. And he just <laughs> signed up. He's the bloody best, and there's nothing ISG can do about it. Man. And uh that's the AON report for this. Alright, uh, so so violence and mayhem and terrorism as always in uh in Johnstown PA. But there weren't oh, any fantastic. There weren't any what, Mike? There weren't any murders. There weren't any murders? Of course there, there the was a fucking bombing. wife and kids. They died in the bombing. There was a bombing. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Alright. Well, I mean I didn't Yeah. So yeah, going off that note, um, this uh, the, this past weekend was the um, big uh, ROH TV tapings. I'm not going to go into anything, obviously, since there are spoilers. Um, however, it was announced at the tapings that um, both you can also watch ROH TV through Sinclair uh, Broadcasting. You can also view them on the new revamped ROH website, which will be, which will be coming soon. I was going to say it doesn't look um, very it, revamped yet. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Not, not yet. It's in the works, but uh, you, you'll be able to view it through there as well as where, as well as uh, anything from Sinclair broad, Broadcasting. And, and that, um, that and makes it, sense since it's a, it's very regional. Not everybody's going to get it on TV, and this way they can kind I of don't still get branch it. out. So yeah, like you don't get. It. I think we do have a yeah. couple Sinclair uh, channels here in Pittsburgh. Um, and I don't yeah, know about so, you. Exactly. So if you don't get it in your town, you know you. Still can watch it on uh, the new ROH website that'll be coming soon. Uh, and it was also uh, found out that at the TV tapings, um, 
The, the announced team is an interesting duo of Kevin Kelly, former WWE uh, announcer, mm-hmm. um, and color commentator uh, Nigel McGuinness, formerly Devin really? Wolf from TNA. Wow. Making his, making his ROH return. He will, he will be doing color commentary for the event or for the uh, show. That, that already sounds so, like an update from what they did on HDNet. Oh, absolutely. So... Uh, McGinnis and Kelly will be on the uh, announced team, and it should be a great event. Uh, or it should be a great show. The tapings have, uh, I believe they taped four episodes. Um, they're going to do another set of tapings, I believe, in Louisville. I'm not sure exactly. If you want uh, tickets, go to ROHwrestling.com. Go check them out. Support them. Um, but then we have another big local event uh, this weekend on August 20th. Cage Fury uh, for right. IWC. Uh, I'm just going to run down the card uh, really quickly. Um, we have a friend of the show, David Ardemira, taking on Dalton Castle, um, who is a very uh, eccentric. We, we played a, we played uh, a, a, we played the video on, on Dalton Castle a couple weeks ago, and it was pretty, yeah, pretty <laughs> tremendous. No, it's some it's something about a milkshake. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that, that murdering son of a bitch, David Ardemira, is no friend of mine. That's right. I don't know. Well, he's well, he's fighting a milkshake, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> new, two new matches have been announced. Uh, the Blue Collar Slaughter, uh, taking on the team of Tyler Stone and JT Williams. What? Um, uh, two, uh, well, Tyler Stone has been wrestling in IWC for a little while. The yeah. other three, I'm not exactly sure about. Uh, we'll have to see what comes from there. Uh, Super Indie Ladder Match Qualifiers. Two three two uh three way matches to qualify for the four way oh, ladder match. I'm sorry, I uh, just saw who, new super indie champion. I just saw who Blue Collar Slaughter is. That's a couple of the uh trainees, I think, down there. So and JT Williams oh, yeah. of the Pocket Rockets. Whoa! The Pocket Rockets. Whoa! I'm sorry, I'm mar- <laughs> I, I mark for the I mark for the Pocket Rockets. They've been my favorite <laughs> I, team. I, 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 the, I, think, for the Pocket Rockets, Sork. What? I think I think Sork just had a rocket shoot off in his pocket. I'm sorry, oh, I'm a fan. Wieners. <laughs> uh, two super uh for winner takes all the last event of the year super in the ladder match qualifiers uh it will be Logan Shulo versus Sebastian versus Shulo, Bobby Shulo. uh in one qualifier the second qualifier will be uh friends of the show Johnny Gargano versus Justin Iowa versus M Dog Twenty Matt Cross uh the two winners of those three ways will go on to the four way match that at winner takes all. Tremendous. For the vacant super indie title. Um, and then, uh, cage match for the War Games Advantage. Uh, Bubba the Bulldog versus Chess Flexor, the new owner. Oh my god. That's the greatest <laughs> match of all time. Uh, <laughs> and there's been, a, there's been a little controversy surrounding, uh, one Bubba the Bulldog that we may get into a little later in this, uh, in the minute, but let's go. I think we Let's should. I think we should touch on it definitely, and I don't mean that touch in any figurative for it. Yeah, I, I, no, I we're not touching. Happening. We're not no. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, um, <laughs> there was a picture that was. No, no, no. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, Run down the card. Run down the card. We'll oh, get into okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Um, cage match final encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, friend, the, friends of the show, Super Hentai taking on friends of the show and TNA superstar Shima mm-hmm. Dion. Who also signed up? Shima <laughs> the dog thinks that's interesting. <laughs> hey, thank you, puppy. Uh, Shima, Shima uh, I will actually be wrestling this Thursday on Impact. Uh, it is confirmed. He's, I believe, he's in an eight-man oh, uh, X division. He was match, on so. last week too, in the backstage segment. Was, was he, he back well, there? Well, he was on in a backstage. He was. he was in a backstage segment last week, but uh, okay. I, yeah, you know, so, I thought I saw him like momentarily, but it was I was really tired. Yeah, he was getting yelled at by Eric Bischoff, and yeah, I'm pretty yeah. and I'm pretty sure in that in that situation, Shima Zion could have kicked him in the teeth, but that's okay. Uh, so go check him out this Thursday. Uh, I believe he is in an eight man uh, X Division match. So go check that out. Cool. And then the main event, cool. War Games, uh, Team IWC versus the Founding Fathers. We're going to see Ray Rowe, uh, Passad, and Jason Gorey taking on John McChesney, Jimmy Vegas, and Dennis Gregory in a War Games match. Um, definitely um, good. Stuff. Go ahead. I said I said he's a bum. He's a dirty, dirty. The bum. The, the the dirty, filthy, uh, bum, uh, Dennis Gregory. Uh, so all that, all that and more. Uh, Cage Fury, Saturday, August twentieth, uh, bell time seven thirty. Uh, go get your tickets at iwcwrestling.com. Go check them out. 
Uh, and yeah, that's that's the well, that's the event. Do you want to do we want to get into the? Uh, I think the it, this is indie news. It's controversy. It's a uh, local, but it's also it, kind of a social it, media it's contro- controversy. It's controversy, and Sork had the scoop. Do Sorg I? Had the just scoop. Do I have the scoop? Tweet a picture of his I, dick. I, I was witness. Sork had the scoop. Before Wait, oh, well, uh, you, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, well, well it's no, Russell fan. You, you, you read some of these messages. I watched the apology. I read the apology by uh, Chuck Roberts. What's going on here? There is, uh, well, a photo, um, a photo that was, uh, drawn, uh, by friend of the show, con- uh, Jimmy pretty DeMarco. much co-host of the show, Juicy James DeMarco. Wait, that guy out? Delicious yeah, he's put it on Facebook and he got suspended. Yeah, delicious Jimmy DeMarco. Wait, uh, photo, did he get suspended or, from IWC or from Facebook? From Facebook, apparently. Like, they are flagging it as inappropriate. For those uh-huh. who don't know, the pictures, I, and I presume these are the pictures that are going around, there's some drawings go around, going around of, of the competition for the War Games match at IWC, uh, performing, uh, Fellatio on Bubba the more Bulldog. Specific, I, I oh, just got texted a picture of, John of, of these drawings. You got texted? And oh man, are they inappropriate? Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty, impr- <laughs> I mean, you, you don't put, you don't put, sexual content like that on Facebook for the most part. That's but true. Jimmy DeMarco is I, not daunted by this. Jimmy DeMarco, is, Jimmy DeMarco is an artist. Okay? Yes, he that is. Was a he is. And he, he wants is, his like, peacock to fly. He's a sexual artist. He's a sexual artist. <laughs> that, that was sent to Source phone during Resolution that we got to check out. Yes, yes. And that's not the first thing that he sent to me like that. Um, and when I saw, <laughs> when I saw this, 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 uh, this uh, apology by Chuck Roberts, on on the uh, IWC Facebook page, I was knew exactly what the hell he was talking about, and I haven't been on the Facebook page for a while. Um, yeah, and Chuck Robert uh, issuing an apology. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the views that it says, uh, you know, the, it, you know, aside from the personal feelings towards the people involved in the match, the views and graphic pictorial displays recently posted on the Facebook and Twitter account of uh, James Danilo, the use his real name, aka Jimmy DeMarco. Are not those of IWC. Furthermore, IWC had nothing to do with Mr. You know, getting suspended from Facebook for the posts. So, and I know I saw a Facebook post from him that, uh, I, he said he would be tweeting this stuff since people flag it on Facebook. So, um, thank yeah, God for uncensored go. tweets. There, yeah, you can't we, really. Sorg, we have the right to bear tweets. <laughs> Somebody's listening to awesome cast. Um, yes, and Mr. DeMarco, that is a right, that is in his internet bill of rights to tweet naughty pictures. Not the children. Not the children. Sword. That's not cool. And, 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 you know, and in support of this, if you go to his page, his profile page appears to be him holding an American flag down by the river. Yeah. Down by the river. So, I mean, you know. There's no truth to the fact that you may live in a van down by the river, but that, that's okay. Yes, yes. There, there, there There's also no truth that he has killed actor Jim Duggan and stolen his American flag. <laughs> that could be. You know, that could be Jim Duggan's American flag. It's uh, very, very possible. So, I mean, that was that was an interesting uh, uh, social media aspect that happened, uh, surprisingly. So, um, so yeah. I, any thoughts on that? <laughs> other than, other than it's hilarious. hilarious. What's that? I, I see how my thoughts. It was a beautifully drawn, uh, very well detailed photo. Or not a photo. Ooh, well, it may as well have been a photo. That was very, <laughs> was, that was very it was, detailed. It was, it was by, photographically detailed. Uh, friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco. <laughs> yeah, and we can't show it on here. I mean, we we I mean we we do a lot of nice stuff on this show, but I don't think we can't show hey, it. On Sorg, no, I, I think I, I think we get flagged on Facebook or uh, YouTube for Sorg, it. To be honest, can you put it on the app? <laughs> Oh As a my. background wallpaper. Oh, oh. I would have to contact the <laughs> yeah. original artist first. And uh, perhaps, perhaps. I, and I have to check my Listen, contact. I, I, I ran into Mr. DeMarco the other night at Walmart. I was doing some shopping. He was really? doing some shopping. I, I, you know, I, I was just coming in. He was just coming Twitter. out. Before I know it, bang, just like that, I'm stealing everything in the place and loading it into his windowless giant white van. Jimmy DeMarco <laughs> emits a scent. Um, that is, it's absolutely positively irresistible. He is an amazing individual. Um, he just, whatever, whatever he wants. Whatever he wants, Jim Marco. There you go. There you go. And that Indeed. concludes our Indie Minutes. <laughs> So, hey, go check out IWCWrestling.com. It's going to be a great show. I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be in Baltimore at the Comic-Con, of course. Uh, but I hope a few of you guys are. And go check it out. 
Uh, it was Baltimore's. For it was. Suckers. It was insane. I will last not time. be at the ball. Apparently, you turned down. Yeah, I, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, you did. Um. Anyways, uh, no, I I went to Cage for. Well, I was I shot a Cage Fury last last year, and um and I got blood on my camera. That's, that's <laughs> that gives you an idea. So, um, so and yeah. ironically, it wasn't from the match. <laughs> yeah, it was just me. I just I spontaneously bled like a Ric Flair promo. <laughs> um, on that note, uh, we're gonna go to our break now. Now, hey, uh, Amok. Hey. Yo! <laughs> we're gonna be playing your music video off your YouTube page. Do you have anything you wanna say about this? Uh, yeah, enjoy it. It's a video, uh, with my music playing simultaneously. <laughs> So. Perfect. <laughs> check it out. Check it out. And also check them out at facebook.com slash amuck412. It's good stuff. Uh, we'll be right back uh, after that and a quick look at the uh, Mayhem Gold for this week. Tell me who the hardest is Roll up in your joint Snap your car to rage Tarnishing Rappers egos with carnage I'm harnessing Artists been claiming underground But they just hardly known Check my gift of gab Bitch I've been kissing the Blarney Stone You can get your ass wet I see you acting nervous I'ma hunt you down Then I'm taking you to the taxidermist Call me Maxidermist Cause I got beef with anybody Hold the mic That's not me I will slit a player's tires I'll just slice his ass Smoke pouring out my whip I'm higher than the price of gas Higher so I might surpass Mediocracy Who needs ya? You let the spoon feed you The Apostles Creed Non-stop and jaw dropping I'm a hot poppin' village in your villages I ain't gonna be no hot poppin' lockin' when I'm done Leave your intros on the dance floor All you're gonna die, so what you shaking your ass for? I can feel it searching through my I will devour the seeds of your speech She pick my teeth with bones I got bones to pick I'll throw the first stone you trick You blast houses and crack house bliss Is not applicable when I'm ripping you with punishment inexplicable Except for undergrounds when I came to get down And I'm waiting to get down with my main and your crown You can't hold me, I ravage your gold The apparatus paint boldly on this canvas called life I could do this all night I'm a wordsmith with a superb gift My first verse bit and I was making an earth shift With talking sheep, I'm knocking off and off and off to sleep Off to operate on the topic when sites is dropping beats Wanna go old school? Let's go to school I bank your head and lockers keep it popping like my name was Orville Redenbacher I can feel it searching through my And earn, and then you're done, son. It's like you never existed, but an unruly decision gets you battered and blistered by the sun's rays. Much like the categoristic, you need to embrace and betray what's intrinsic to your pain. I feel it searching through my every pore. I'm ready for these chants and dental wings to take me higher than I've ever I've been. been when I'm I can feel it searching through my veins. You know I can't explain where scientific means is not.
text message that says, Tiny hands are not for buttholes. Wow. Yeah, you sent me that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm angry. I'm angry. Man, I'm angry. I'm from New York. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm TJ Lunchbox, and you're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for our wonderful, awesome segment. Remember when? Is that my cue? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this one? A muck really didn't see you there. <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. That voice that you just heard... Uh, is our guest this week, and he's doing our uh, our remember when this week, and uh, now amok. Thank you. So let's remember when. Um, I've never done this before, so <clears throat> bear with me. Kind of making this up on the spot, but I remember when uh, the writers actually contributed to the mid card titles, and there were actually storylines. <laughs> For like the Intercontinental title, so like when Shawn Michaels forfeited the Intercontinental title, and they had the whole ladder match with Razor Ramon, there was actually a lot of thought and time put into that angle. And then like uh, when Stone Cold and The Rock, you know, Stone Cold was throwing the belt off the thing, and it was almost like the it was like a on par with the World Heavyweight title as far as the time that went into that stuff, even up as uh, recently as I don't know when Edge. And Christian had the the whole brotherhood stab me in the back angle for the Intercontinental title. Um, it just seems like lately there's no story at all. Uh, the mid card titles don't even really make the pay per view. Sometimes it's just kind of like a flavor of the week thing. Whoever gets it gets it. I can't. Can you guys remember the last time that there was actually a storyline for a mid card title, or is it just me? Uh, they've been really weak when they have had them. Uh, really kind of not throwaway of stuff. I, yeah, not all of them. Once in a while, we're like, oh, there's something actually happening here. But it really is few and far between. I mean, it, it really has seemed like, like, okay, oh, this was a nice series of matches between like Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. But there really yeah. wasn't much around it. Um, you know, Daniel right. Bryan and The Miz had a good one for the U.S. title. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jericho and Ray had a good one. But there again, uh, this is like you know these are all like six months apart. What you know, what you're naming here? Yeah, and but I mean, and you know, the, but they're also been they've also had the people who have held the mid cartels hold them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like the mid cartels have jumped around a lot less in the main belts at this point. Yeah, my <laughs> thing, my thing with the whole thing is that the yeah the storylines would be there. However, it would kind of. Like the the belt would still kind of take a back seat to the whole thing, because it would be like you know oh these guys are feuding but let's throw in a title just you know kind of, and I do I there hasn't really been a feud, and I agree that you know I think there needs to be some kind of feud behind it, but it's kind of just thrown in there as a as a it doesn't uh, t uh they don't use a lot of thought behind it mm -hmm. is what I'm saying mm -hmm. it's you know they don't put the effort into making the title mean something where they can, you know, well, where, Hey, I really, you know, that title means a lot. I want it more than just like, Oh, I just kind of feel like I, like I want that title. Yeah, there's not much like back in the day where it was like Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. And it was a big deal. Bret Hart, we got the belt for the first time, which we saw right. the SummerSlam rewind just recently. Well, what about mm -hmm. the, the bulldog and Bret Hart main evented? Yeah. SummerSlam with an Intercontinental title match. Exactly. I mean, hell would freeze over before that happened uh, yeah. in present day. And I th unfortunately, I think the difference is now we have the top of the card title and the mid card title, and they're both the world or WWE title. And it depends on which one's more important that month. So I, I don't think we're going to get to that point again. I mean, it really <laughs> just seems like a placeholder title to see what people do with these days, because we just have too many titles right now. So... Absolutely, but it it it, it is unfortunate. It is un unfortunate. So I wish they would defend the internet championship on. Super <laughs> you know what? I I I swear the the internet championship has got to come up on like superstars or something. Um, because superstars is on the internet. Yeah, exactly. And now and we did discuss how superstars is like internationally. It's different different programs and everything. Um, but you know, aside from that. You know. But Sorg, do you remember when the TV championship was only defended on TV every week? Like they didn't have pay-per-view matches for the TV title. Wait, which Fed? Which Fed are we talking about? WCW. WCW. 
Okay, like yeah. WCW, they would defend the TV title every week on TV. Yeah, and it was, it was something that made you feel like, oh, this is a title that's important. I get to see something, maybe a title change on television and everything like that. Maybe Yes, and, and you can do that for the internet because this is the internet era. Yeah, and it makes that important. It's like these aren't all just the matches that don't mean anything anymore. So... Um, and, and, you know, and, and I wonder, you know, or do we think about the U.S. and the Intercontinental titles as the TV belts now? A little bit. You know, I mean, those are the ones where there is something happening. There are title changes going on from time to time. Um, so, you know, uh, you know yeah, they're, they're carrying the matches over to the, the pay-per-views, but most of the time they're kind of throwaway on the pay-per-views, you know? Yeah. So, well, those those well, I titles think, used I think, to be I think the IC title has a bit of a chance now because Cody Rhodes has it. That's that's true. That could be interesting. What were you saying, Muck? Oh, I just said it just seemed like those titles used to have storylines around them because you they were unpredictable. They were about those two guys, like Stone Cold and The Rock. You yeah. knew those guys were going to be fighting over the World Heavyweight Title, so it was setting those guys up to transcend to the main event scene with that same rivalry. That Whereas now it just seems whatever random um, bullshit is kind of thrown in. I often find myself forgetting who is even champion. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that should be the case. Now there are too many titles, so I don't think we can place a huge emphasis on them, but I would have liked to seen another title match at SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have minded that at all. That's right. We didn't see IC. We didn't see US. We didn't even see tag. Oh, tag divisions more. I than really thought there was going to be a Dolph Ziggler versus A Rod match. Yeah, yeah, that would have made sense. But again, it seems to be something they're building to like on TV. Like that's that kind of place Hiller st storyline happening on TV that mm, could make it to the pay per view, but doesn't need to. It's something to just entertain a TV audience. And because I mean, what well, SummerSlam had like four matches up until the last day. Uh, finally five, and they filled it with a lot of, you know, singing and a random six man tag. I mean, they're, I don't think they're worried on building an undercard anymore for these pay per views. The, that pay per view was built on CM Punk versus Cena again, just like it was the month before. And I, I, I think they're just not, they don't, they're seeing, you know, that is the thing that's selling it. So that's what they're going to concentrate on, concentrate on. Right. right. To make sure that comes out as good as possible. We, we, we all saw SummerSlam. We all saw, saw how it was, Kind of an intricate finish. There was a lot going on surrounding mm. one match. The other match was really good. I mean, I thought Christian Randy Orton was really good. It um, went like twenty five minutes. I was shocked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was spectacular. <laughs> it, it was good. It was it was it was damn good. Um, so I mean, they they have the two big titles and they're taking up almost half the show. They did that world title at about nine thirty. Right, yeah. So why build up this undercard when you have the workhorses in the main event bringing the fans in? <clears throat> they're what they're paying for. What is the purpose of filling it out with the rest when it really is kind of throwaway in the long run? You Here's know? the purpose. Because they're not doing a good job with building main event guys. So okay. yeah. I, who, I you know, was wrestling on superstars and then they decided to give them the world title a week and a half later could have really used the mid-card title run and could have really used that time to develop. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of... Oh. We're, having a, we're having our internet problems striking again. Thank you, Skype. At least it's reconnecting right away. I don't way know to, what's happening. Way to be a dick. Uh, way to be you know what? I don't think Skype. I don't think Skype likes your opinion on this topic. Uh, I don't think so either. I think it's had enough. I don't think I it's like your enough. opinion <laughs> on this topic. Uh, L L LB, 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 turn your video board. on. Uh, other here. than that, yeah, you're here. Yeah, you just need your video. There you go. Yep. Um, but no, you're right. There's nothing to build up that undercard. There's, 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 you know, I mean, Daniel Bryan. No, Daniel Bryan has, doesn't have the title. He has money in the bank. The money in the bank is the thing that builds up the next person to bring them up. Not the IC title anymore. These, there's these other methods to that's do that. Not, there's, well, who's talking? That's not necessarily true. No? No, it depends on the guy. Okay. Dolph, Dolph Ziggler went from a lengthy IC time. Oh, now we're going to lose him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, okay, yeah, okay. Do we count him? And is he is he counted on the website as being champion, Dolph Ziggler? Yeah. He is? Yeah, he is. Okay. Yes. 
I mean, so, you know, give them that. And then maybe that was a little placeholder thing, you know, to see. And maybe they'll give it to them later. I mean, they gave them the IC belt again. And maybe that's a, you know, we, we're giving you this now to do something. And then eventually we'll bring it back up. Dolph Ziggler really does seem like a guy that can main event to me. You know, and I think a lot of people agree on that. You know, versus like Kofi Kingston's been kind of brought up and down. How many times at this point you kind of wonder, um, you know, uh, CM Punk was really close a lot of times before finally doing the money in the bank thing. Um, so, and, 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 you know, even then we had the ECW title, which kind of was a, was a, uh, that kind of next step down. You know, Jack Swagger had it, ended up getting the world title. CM Punk had it, ended up having the world title. Guys like John Morrison had it and had great matches with CM Punk, with, you know, whoever else was involved with ECW at the time. And Mark Henry had it, and now he's like the top heel on... Mark Matthew. Henry is doing the best stuff of his career right now. I mean, can everybody agree on that? Oh, Absolutely. God, yeah. I mean, I mean, I am interested in, I mean, when it started, we're like, oh, great, here another Mark Henry's going to tear off the cage and look ridiculous and whatever, and he's going to start getting squashed randomly. He is being serious and not just, you know, he squashed every big guy in the company just about. Pretty much, Remember, yeah. Oh, oh, a long while ago when, <clears throat> like, the rumor was that Mark Henry had been signed to this, like, million dollar 10 year contract or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now we know why. <laughs> he's, he's proven he, apparently that's right. Apparently he was. I mean, he's I, well, fucking no, still around. I can't see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see this guy kind of being the main event thing and people taking him seriously. I, I feel like they'll try again. But you know, this is good stuff. I mean, this this is a good undercard. It doesn't even involve a title. Exactly. I'd yeah. like to. I'd like to see Mark Henry really. Uh, kind of channel some of that vintage sexual chocolate to really kind of just reach that top tier. So it becomes a very violent sexual chocolate. You know, did anybody hear the sexual chocolate chants? Violent sexual chocolate. Oh there was, there was sexual God. chocolate chants at SummerSlam. That was pretty tremendous. Um, that, that was, I, I didn't expect um, um, LA to be as hot a crowd as it was. To that extent. See, I didn't you think know? that. I thought it was a dead crowd. You did you? Yes. Cause I, it was, I mean. No, no, no. Oh, go ahead, Chachi. I, I, I mean, they, they, they cheered for punk. Yeah. They booed Cena. Yeah. They tried to pull a Chicago. And, and they, it didn't work. It's not going to be Chicago. Well, yeah, no, no. Chicago. I don't think Chicago. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that they could ever be Chicago when that comes to that match. No. I just mean that for a lot of the other matches, they were quiet. They were pretty dead. Yes. Yeah. I, I I didn't think that. For me, maybe maybe that was the case. For me, from what I saw, the only time they were dead was during the CeeLo Green performance. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, they were dead. By the way, when CeeLo came out. I fast forwarded through the CeeLo Green performance. By the way, it when, was a good performance. When CeeLo no, came wasn't. out, did you see no. all the tweets for Tiny Arms? Yeah, he has tiny arms. It was all over arms. the place. <laughs> I never knew. I never knew. I never knew. The thing, the By thing the way, guys, I didn't know CeeLo Green was actually Aretha Franklin. Oh. Apparently, what the fuck was he wearing? I mean, you know, he was wearing a choir robe. And aside from uh, that, it, uh, the 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 that might have been my the most impre- my favorite national anthem they've done yet. Yeah, but that. it's like. Okay, so yeah, the only thing that pissed me off about the performance was he, and of course, he didn't say fuck to you, even, even though after. Come on, we're, t- we're TV 14 or whatever. I, I get it. But after, did, uh, who said it on, tw- or during the Google Plus thing, uh, that after, when the camera cut, he did the, um, the, uh, V with a tongue thing? Oh, he did the Mickey James spot from WrestleMania? Yeah, said, like, but... what? <laughs> that was, uh, but the crowd was dead, and I, I understand that, you know, you're going to a wrestling event, you know, they kind of don't want to see that. Uh, but I think the the best thing about that performance was that it made SummerSlam kind of seem like a big deal. Mm-hmm. What it should, like, it what hasn't been for a long time. Still yeah. disagree. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I guarantee it, the only reason SummerSlam seemed like a big deal was because of the main event. Yes, yes. Well, it, 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 that is true. I, but that, but I, they also but I mean, just, go ahead, my, go ahead, Russell fan. Sorry. Well, that I agree that you know, but it's him doing the performance, kind of you know. They only do that kind of stuff for like WrestleMania now and just, you know, really bigger shows. And they had the national anthem. I think it was for. 
yeah, for the longest time, SummerSlam just feel has felt like another pay per view. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, last last year when well, I won that contest and they gave me what was the the last five year anthology uh, what was probably like oh three through oh eight. Yeah. And then uh, the 2009 Summer Slams, and, the and, towel. I, and I started in a towel. Yes. Yeah, the Randy Orton beach towel. Hell yeah! Uh, I think I gave you the sandals, right? Yeah, I took yeah, the sandals. Yeah. Uh, anyways, well, I started watching they got through ate the. By an- a dog. <laughs> they didn't last long. Um, well, I started going through the anthology, and like you were saying, nothing felt like a big deal. I, I, you know, I was popping them in year to year, and it really felt like I was just kind of picking a month in every year that was just a random pay per view. Nothing felt important. Nothing felt like SummerSlam. No, nothing felt like, you know, not that it, it's been WrestleMania level, but nothing's felt like the WrestleMania of the end of summer, you well, know. Sork, what, which was the last one that really felt like a big event to you? The real last one that felt like a big event. Um, <laughs> in my head, off the top of my head, unfortunately, is all the way back at the Highway to Hell one that was Undertaker versus Stone Cold. Okay, then you're not thinking. SummerSlam 02 was huge. What was SummerSlam? Okay, okay, what? No, okay, I take Brock it. Versus Brock Lesnar and the return of Shawn Michaels. There was that. Not big. There, there was that. There's uh, the Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels, which was, yes. help me out, 04-ish? 04. Okay. Four. Okay, so there's that. Okay, that, those, that's those okay, felt that, big. That oh. seemed big match-wise. Mm-hmm. I'm t- with the, with the, the one you were talking about, the Highway to Hell one, you know, the matches, plus it was in Madison Square Garden, Mm-hmm. Plus, they, I believe a couple people performed at that event. Uh, what was it? The one, whoever did the DX theme. Uh, they performed the DX theme. Yeah, the people the there, ICP was there with the oddities, and I think they performed their entrance. Um, and they oh, were. Performed their entrance. I mean, they did that at every show. They did that. Well, yeah, they, they were doing that at the time, yeah. Well, not. Yeah. Every, did they yeah, really? Trust me. Russell fan, do you really want to argue this with me? Okay, I'm not guys. Gonna, okay, guys. Like, I'm, I'm, they did. Yeah, but. ICP performed their entrance team on every Raw, every SmackDown, every pay per view they're on. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were around for SmackDown. In all, okay. yeah, I think it was pre-SmackDown. They were not actually. around for SmackDown, but they're for every. Raw, I, I, every I, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, and I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking at a list now of, of Summer Slams in the last few years, and what we had, uh, like Kane versus Mysterio for the World Championship. We had last year was the Team WD, WWE versus the Team Nexus. That kind of felt big, but it was. Yeah, yeah. We, that, um, it was not, not, not based off of the card. Yeah. There are times when the WrestleMania card does not look as big. It doesn't, you know, it's not doesn't seem like a big event from the card. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But mid '90s, they were really rough in the mid '90s. Yeah, WrestleMania is a spectacle. Mm-hmm. It's more than just the wrestling. Mm-hmm. Hey, now so, mid '90s, you know. didn't we have you know somebody versus Razor Ramon in the mid '90s? Wasn't Diesel fighting Bob Backlund or some shit? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Those are big times. It's important shit. Hey, can we get back to CeeLo? <laughs> what do you want no. to talk about CeeLo? I, I want to disagree with what Wrestle Fan said. Mm. By putting CeeLo on that event, it took away from other matches that we could have had. That's true. It now, took it, away you from... You can say that for every WrestleMania that has a musical guest like that. But that's the point of... Their... No, no. WrestleMania is four hours. Four, four hours. Four hours, four hours long. Hours. You're right. Okay. You're right. SummerSlam was not. Okay. So... I, I it's not like CeeLo too. Green was introducing anyone. That's true. If he was uh, doing, yeah. like, someone's theme song or something like that... Like, if they had uh, Living Color do Cult of Personality for CM Punk, that'd be cool. That right. would be, be different. Cool. Uh, you got something yeah. to look? Yeah, I, I think that in general, uh, the mu- any kind of association with music that the WWE has has just gone downhill constantly. They used to have bands that did the theme music, mm-hmm. so there was a tie-in. Mm-hmm. Then they had Kid Rock. Uh, oh, you know, God, God. That was gross. You shouldn't bring that up. <laughs> which everyone hated, but at least it had something to do. I mean, wrestling music is basically bad shit, new metal. So Kid Rock fit the, fit the glove, right? So now <laughs> it's CeeLo. The problem is nobody listens to that shit that likes wrestling. I mean, he came out, I think most wrestling fans thought, uh, King Mabel's making a comeback. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, poncho, that that gold poncho or whatever he was wearing, the tarp over. Put King Mabel I mean, in a dryer. What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> right. But then, uh, exactly. The only other, the only other thing, uh, musicians out there, if you're gonna perform at Russell or at a WWE event, don't do the don't do the part where you hold the microphone to the crowd and have them say part of it. Because uh, they, no. they won't say it, and that's, that's just. <laughs> 
that that's kind of a natural move for them to do, though. I mean, uh, but yeah, you're right. Because I mean, this is yeah, they, 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 you don't. Not everybody that came to SummerSlam came to see freaking CeeLo. That's I'm, true. Actually, I, probably Jordan, nobody that came to SummerSlam. No one who went to SummerSlam. They didn't went come there. for CeeLo. I, I, I think you're thing, underestimating thing, the audience here. And we are talking about it's LA. Like, we could see wrestling and CeeLo. Oh, that's a bonus. Uh, yep. But the, I, I mean, these guys were sold out for weeks before I think they even announced CeeLo. Um, it's CeeLo. You know. You know, but, I, I, but no, the, the whole point is they're trying to bring these artists in. Some CeeLo, uh, he, didn't he win a Grammy or something? He's been in the charts for that, you know, fuck you song or whatever he's they been call on, it. He's been on The Voice and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you he's, he's I, a I, name. I, this, I is, to... this is them ca- trying to connect with the mainstream and get, you know, some exposure in the mainstream and look like they belong up there with all the the artists and everything in Hollywood and, and look makes WWE look important to the wrestling fans. They look completely ridiculous and we don't give two Listen. shits about CeeLo, but oh, actually, well, I want to go to Will first since he had something. I kind of, Oh, uh, I, I wanted to say that I, I have to disagree with the muck that, um, I, uh, have been a fan of CeeLo, uh, in the past and some of his recent work is not too bad. And, um, and I'm a big wrestling fan, so. I mean, granted, I I would never buy the pay per view to see CeeLo, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. You're not buying. Do you think that the wrestling audience is in touch with CeeLo as opposed to another band? (coughs) Maybe more bands, yeah. I I do think there are more appropriate acts. Um, That's just uh, just who they picked. Yeah. Uh, Listen. Go ahead, Josh. We got off topic. (laughs) <laughs> we, we started ranting about music and wrestling. That wasn't my rant. My point is, we could have seen, and this goes back to what Amok said, mm-hmm. we could have seen a match for those lower undercard titles yeah, that yeah. weren't represented at a pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. could have Instead, seen the match that was perfectly set up on Raw with Alex Riley and Dolph Ziggler. For the mm-hmm. US yeah. Match. Right. We could have seen that. We could have seen Cody Rhodes. We could have seen the tag champions go up against Kofi and uh, Evan Bourne, mm-hmm. which has been good. Mm-hmm. And no, instead yeah. we got CeeLo. We got a pointless fucking six-man tag match. Yeah, that was the... Um, that was the uh, I, 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 when, I was watching got, it. The tag match felt like the, the WrestleMania Battle Royal that it got everybody in there so they could get the big show check. And that yeah, really and then, was. And then you give me shit like Mark Henry versus Sheamus over well, no. over on, who's that was the strongest. No, 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 no. Mark Henry's been this Mark Henry stuff's been all right. No, it hasn't. I don't like Mark Henry. I've never liked Mark Henry, and Neither I don't. That's I. racist. It has nothing to do with <laughs> his color. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. <laughs> but um, I I, I mean, you could have. You could have given me Cody Rhodes. Mm-hmm. You could have given me Kofi. Yeah. You, you could have that? given me. Can we believe that we're at the day where we want to see Cody Rhodes? Like we didn't imagine I, that. Like I want to see Cody Rhodes. Rhodes has also yeah. been yeah. Awesome. I've always enjoyed Cody Rhodes. Give me, and I've said it before. Give me the small guys. Mm-hmm. I don't want to watch Sheamus and Mark Henry go at it for fifteen minutes panting. That's you what know, she said. They gave you, they gave you the small <laughs> guys in the six man tag match. Yeah, and yeah. it's okay if they were gonna give us those um, feuds that they've been building up. It was, it was the same people that are in the six man tag. Mm-hmm. They could have given well, us Art Truth and John Morrison. They could have given us um, Del Rio and Kingston. They could have given us uh, who were the other two that are in the match? I don't remember. Uh, Kofi and I already no. said Kofi. Guys, oh, Miz and Miz and Ray, Miz and Miz Ray. And Ray. <laughs> they could have given us Miz and Ray, but they didn't. What, they did. Miz and Ray was actually supposed to be a match. Hello. But yeah, yeah, you're back. To... You're coming back. I'm back. Thank Miz, you, Skype. Miz and Ray was supposed to be a match. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all the stuff that all those matches they gave us, it was just in one match, which was unacceptable. Instead, we got all these other matches and fucking CeeLo. I want to say one more thing about CeeLo, and then I'll drop it. I understand, uh, Sorg, what you're saying about the mainstream exposure. It's good, but it has to be uh, intelligent marketing. I mean, I could get a gig at a fucking NASCAR show. It doesn't mean that's good for me. Yeah. 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 Actually, I think that might be detrimental to your health. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That is the worst possible career move. Unless you run away from people and make a right turn. They'd never be able to fall. (laughs) (laughs) They'd never figure it out. They'd never figure it out. You have way too much teeth to be doing that gig. Uh, (laughs) I I agree. Maybe they should have gotten, you know, somebody that the WWE audience could fit with more. But, 
you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think, well, I don't think Chachi would ever change your attitude over that if it was like Motorhead or some, you know, big band. Yeah. You well, know. no, no. I mean, all right, there's, there's a line. And it is right? kind of thrown because we haven't had musical artists at SummerSlam. Right. So. But I mean, no, that's fine. But if you're going to give me a musical artist at WWE, make them there for a purpose. Yeah. So not just not just because they did the fucking theme song for the pay per view that WWE decided to use. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like like we we said before, if you're gonna have a musical act at, at a WWE pay per view, they better fucking be performing a theme song. Yeah, and that, that's where that's Cielo was a little it. bit weird. Although you gotta say, uh, it, well, I think the SummerSlam theme, the last few WrestleMania themes, you know, we talk about usually it's like really you know a new metal alternative, whatever for a lot of these guys. But the themes for the big shows have been more. I listen. I hear it on Kiss FM here locally. You know. I mean, yeah. I, I I don't know how many times like, and I try not to so bad to listen to the you know the radio like this. But yeah, I'll have Kiss FM on, and it's like, oh, it's a WrestleMania theme. And like a half hour later, oh, that was yeah. another WrestleMania <laughs> theme. <laughs> oh wait, was that SummerSlam? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that, this is a Stop really interesting. Isn't this a really interesting new way? And that's where CeeLo fits into that. Honestly, is whatever they're trying to do. I don't know if they're trying to broaden the appeal or what with these kinds of themes that they're putting on the big shows, but it, it is a really big turn from what they were doing before. Yeah, it's totally. a bad turn. It's because, it's because they're definitely I don't think it's trying a to be a multimedia organization. That is true, and they're trying to reach out and look more important. What are you saying, Russell fan? But you know... Oh. Go ahead, no, Mike. I mean, just, just, just to kind of echo what Chachi said, if you're going to have someone do a performance, it should at least be, like, have them do the, like, Saliva is a perfect example. Because Saliva used to give WWE a lot of WWE, a lot of theme songs for the pay-per-views. Yes. But they used to include a performance of a guy's theme song. Yes. Right. Like, Batista's or, or Dudley's right. or something like that. It made sense. But I swear, if I see Diddy or Sean Combs or P. Diddy Puffy Fruit Snack, Whatever he calls himself at WrestleMania, <laughs> performed <Snack>. coming home. <laughs> Who are you listening to? <laughs> well, no, but hey, that's performed coming home at WrestleMania. Then I'm gonna be pissed. I yeah. wouldn't listen to I'm a rapper named Truth Snack. I think there's a, I think there's a market there if that hasn't already happened. But I mean, I, uh, uh, I don't wrestle know. fan, you got something? My for thing, you? my thing is, and this is gonna make me sound like a mark. I don't care. Um, <laughs> this is why I, this is why you know. TNA, your big pay-per-views, like your Bound for Glories, that's why they'll never be as big as the WWE events. Because mm-hmm. I'm sorry, so what WrestleMania and what SummerSlam, I think, was this year is more than just a wrestling pay-per-view, people. Yeah, yeah. It's more than that. We just you know? had a 20-minute argument over the music selection for the pay-per-view. Of course it's... <laughs> Not of, about the wrestling. Versus, the music. versus if you had some star, which is probably from NASCAR or baseball on TNA, no. you're, we're all going to laugh at it. And we're yeah. like, really, Jersey Shore? Really? And even, yeah. we, and even we laughed at Jersey Shore when it showed up on, uh, on TNA. But then we had uh, Jersey Shore on WrestleMania. And well, they, that's because they, and they got the right star from Jersey Shore. Yeah, exactly. They got, the, got Stucky. They didn't get the one that no one gives a fuck about. Yeah, yeah. They didn't Actually, to... I do care a little bit more about Jay Wild than Snooky because she's not a little Oompa Loompa. <laughs> just saying. I'm just. She's okay. better to look at. Can she do a handspring back elbow? She, maybe. <laughs> I'd like to find out. Personally. Personally. I was very personally. <laughs> if she can do a backspring hand elbow with my <laughs> backspring hand elbow, <laughs> if she can do a backspring hand elbow with me balls deep in her hiney. Then let's <laughs> let's let's find that out. Let's myth. Let's bust that myth. Can, can she do something besides giving Becky Bayless a concussion? Oh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know who that is. The, the <laughs> cookie cookie from TNA. I don't watch <laughs> TNA. But- Bobby F. J. Town. Asked this coming from the guy who said he was going to give TNA a trial period and never did. <laughs> that got derailed. All right, I was supposed to go to a show and it was all going to be a gag anyway. So fuck you. <laughs> fuck your mouth. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of know that too, by not so. taking the trial. What's that? <laughs> said he saved some time and aggravation by by backing out on that trial. <laughs> yes, exactly yes, yes. right. It was a I knew what the outcome would be before I entered into it. So yeah, and it would be messy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Backspring are we, hand job. Wait, are, are we talking about TNA or J Wow still? TNA. <laughs> TNA. Aren't they the same thing? Yeah. It would all be pretty messy. <laughs> J uh. Wow is the TNA of Jersey Shore. Backspring um, hand job. <laughs> Backspring hand and j- jibber. But um. Jibber. Right. Back spring old fashioned. Can we go back to? Are we going back to the pay per view now? Sure, let's talk about <laughs> the pay per view. <laughs> We're diverted to. Uh... Oh yeah, can, actually, Bobby F J Tem brings up a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, on the WrestleMania, the television debut <laughs> this weekend. Um, you know how on the DVD we're all pissed that they didn't have Johnny Cash's entrance for the Undertaker. Yeah. Well, the Undertaker has new theme music, okay. according to oh uh, MC, and it's Katy Perry's E.T. When, what is this about? I, somebody was tweeting about this. Uh, I, I don't. I don't get this. What happened is NBC doesn't own the rights or couldn't get the lights oh, to Johnny Cash. Oh, the WrestleMania special. So, and I was. They can get. Oh. But they can get the rights to Katy Perry. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, they showed. You know they showed really all funny? that. You know, after the match stuff, where they played the Johnny Cash song twice. <laughs> Take all the drama out of it. Just <laughs> Katy Perry over and over. I mean, what is well, it? You know, did this really happen? How is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Undertaker, they, they put Katy Perry's music on when he came out. No, yeah. no. What really happened was they played Johnny Cash's music. Uh, what the song he was? He, the, what, what was it? Grave ain't no place. There or? ain't no grave. There ain't no grave. Can hold my body down. I mean, it's been on a few commercials <laughs> and stuff too, right? And they replayed. They do their WrestleMania special this time of year on NBC, where they played. I don't know how long was the special? Like an hour, two hours? It was an so, hour. It was, it was an, an hour. hour. I mean, they, they just played a couple of main events and that's it. And they replaced no, actually, the music. They just showed Triple H versus the Undertaker. That was it. And like. That was and, it. This is WrestleMania. Package, Apparently uh, there was one match in WrestleMania. I bet they didn't even show the chair shot. They cut out of the DVD. Um actually did they? I, I wonder. No, I, I wonder. think they cut out the I think they cut out the chair shot. They had to have. They had to. They I cut out the DVD right. while they showed it on TV. Um But it's funny, they did play um A C D C Hell Bells. <laughs> Well, ACDC, you can well it's just like the Metallica stuff. When they got Metallica for, for Sandman. Wait a minute. That was no, that was, it was. Oh, no, Hell's no, Bells. not, not, um, not Hell's Bells for whom the bell tolls. Which is Metallica, which they wouldn't get yes. for the Sandman when they put the, uh, One Night Stand on DVD. But it's Triple H. So but it's Triple, Triple H, 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 so they'll put the money for it. But Johnny Cash is apparently dead too much money. <laughs> how, does, thing, how does this turn into a show like, about music? It's rares? not even that. Well, we have a musical guest. Yeah, we do. So. Okay. Yeah. So we have an expert on the panel. Yes. About Anyhow, music rights. But it, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> It's not only an issue of it being too much money, but you also have to take into account that the person that owns the rights to that song could have just fucking said no. That's true. That's true. We do we do kind of automatically blame WWE for not putting up the money right. for this. <laughs> I mean, the but... person can just say no. Because um, when you buy the rights to use a song, it's... especially like a company like WWE, mm-hmm. you're specifying what you want to use that song for. That is true. Uh, uh, dealing with a but little bit Chachi, of... they all, they've also used it before. They used it for the live show. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, no, uh, uh, investigating a little bit in, in uh, rights for uh, stuff online. Uh, sometimes uh, with the stuff I've dealt with, it's been uh, you choose. Am I using this one time? Which is like, and I and they're like, you know, I've had to explain. No, we're putting this on the internet. We can't just buy the rights for one viewing. That doesn't work. <laughs> right. You know, and then you want to do unlimited, and then that number, the number we have to pay rises. You know, pretty pretty large. Right. You know, uh, until I tell them we're a nonprofit, and it's not. You know, you can give it for free. Um, other than that, um, so I mean, it, it, it's that kind of thing. And, and who knows what that catalog looks like when you're looking right. at Johnny Cash or Metallica or ACDC at that point. I mean, they probably looked at, you know, okay, they will only allow us to get the rights for all those promos leading up to it for the event live and on pay per view, but we won't be able to get the rights or it's too cost prohibitive. Or, you know, they just don't allow it for having that in perpetuity on your DVD on WWE 24-7 on all, how many places is that WrestleMania going to show you show up over the next 20 years? You know, whatever medias are going to be beyond that, you know? I mean, that's that's a huge rights issue, and they got a whole division, I'm sure, handling that over there. Because, <clears throat> I mean, you went from them using the, show, the song for live shows, mm-hmm. pay-per-views, and his occasional TV appearances... Yo, <laughs> Skype drop again. This has been uh, a great. To, uh, 
Except for comfort <laughs> to, the, to the song be uh, wanting to be used on NBC. Yeah, yeah, and that, re- that is going to cost. That is going to cost you a lot more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can't take that pay per view and be like, "Oh, well, you know, Fox wants to show this." Yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and use that music again. Mm-hmm. No. 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 That no. You, it's a case by case situation. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. So the wrestling on the pay per view was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, mentioned the uh, the Orton and the uh, Christian match. I, I thought it was good. I I, I love the finish. I, to I that think match. it's going to be a feud ender. Yeah, you know? that 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 finish was amazing. Uh huh. I heard a lot of people bitch about that match because they thought they buried Christian. Oh whatever. No no. Christian had a good. No, match. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Orton had to do his moves of doom with like plunder involved. Yeah. He had he had to like. Destroy Christian. Didn't Christian kick out of his finisher once or twice there? Like beforehand. They both did. I mean, yeah, they yeah. were both. They were both doing that. I mean, it's. I thought it was. It, it was good. It made them both look like a million bucks. I mean, Christian will probably move on to a non-title situation, but it'll be entertaining. I'm sure. You know. I mean, that's that's fine. Yeah. I think Christian should have won. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that. Christian winning would have meant everything to him, and Randy Orton losing would have meant nothing to him. Uh, I think Christian needed that win to validate himself, especially after the way that he won the title. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's been a it's been a great rivalry. They've had some five star matches, but uh, I just think to solidify Christian as a main event player, he needed to look like a little more than the whiny little bitch. Yeah, yeah. And I understand yeah. that character. I mean, that's that's no uh, new thing to wrestling. I mean, Jericho did it. CM Punk did it. Just the the whiny guy that that you know claws his way to the top somehow, but Christian just needed that one pay per view win to just make him look a little bit dangerous, and I was disappointed that they they couldn't find a way to just give that to him at SummerSlam. And, and I think you're right, and it kind of harkens back to the 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 speech we had at the contract signing for Punk and Cena, where Punk was saying this like you're like like you guys were saying it means everything to him, but it's just another day for Orton winner winner lose. You know, I mean, Orton's going to be at SummerSlam in some fashion because he's he's Randy Orton, um, and yeah, I think that fits with him. Now, I mean, Christian, I, I think he needs that to kind of revalidate himself. But remember, he did win the title fair and square to begin with uh, against Del Rio in the ladder match. Well, right. or is that too far back kinda. for us to remember? No, Edge beat the horn and distracted Del Rio. Oh, that's right. It was it was tainted. Um. That's right. That's right. Yeah. To beat Randy, yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, Christian looks validated uh, to the SmackDown audience, except for against Randy. I mean, he's beaten Sheamus. He's beaten Mark Henry clean. He beats Sin Cara. He's been beating up everybody, but until he got that win over Randy Orton, that whole rivalry uh, made him look like table scraps compared to Orton. Orton doesn't need that win. He's a nine-time champion. It yeah. would have done that feud a lot more to have Christian go over, have him go to the next pay-per-view, possibly even Hell in a Cell, and have Randy get the payback then. I think they could have stretched it out more. Um, but it was a very, very good rivalry. You know, they can still stretch this out to Night of Champions. They could. They and could. it would still be valid if they did, but they're not going to. How are they? I mean, they don't need I a, really hope they don't. They don't need a rubber. That's wearing wearing done. Done. Go ahead, WrestleFan. That's wearing their matches thin. You think? It's wearing them really thin as far as the matches go. Yeah. What, yeah. You don't think they can pull off another good match? I think they could pull it off, but what's going to differentiate that uh, from the four matches they've had before? That's part of the business. Differentiate, that's, motherfuckers that's, going to college using these big words. <laughs> <laughs> that That is part of the business. Their job is to go out there and have a good match no matter the circumstances. Mm-hmm. True. It's and their think- job to create a new experience each time they wrestle. There's always something that they c- could come up with. And, Look at, and I think they could have re- brought back the problem solver, Jimmy. And what? have yep. Husky Harris mm-hmm. be the problem solver. Because mm-hmm. I mean, speaking of Husky Harris, that motherfucker is in the new video game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's why I was bringing, why I was bringing him up because I'm like, if he's in the video game, you might as well use him on TV. But I mean, I, look at look at CM Punk and Rey Mysterio. They wrestled how many times, Monday to Monday, and still put on. Uh, a different match each time. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. I don't, uh, I don't know. They're, they're also is... not going for a title each time. They're, they're just having a rival. Yeah. Yeah. So so they can have, like, Punk win or Ray win, and it doesn't mean much in the great landscape except in their rivalry, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. 
Mm. I think they could always pop an angle from this if they want to extend it. But I do wonder if, you know, it's time they're going to bring somebody else up. Henry's been ripping things up for months. You know, I, I think it would be unfortunate, but they could go with the title with him. You know, Seamus is getting a face push. Like Seamus is getting a face push, yeah. What was I would that? like to see Mark Emery with the belt. I think Mark Emery would be good with the belt. You think so? You th- I didn't think I need to have the belt. Thank you, Ron. You think he would be like, uh, you think he would be a good kind of monster with the belt these days? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Especially that... because SmackDown, SmackDown is depleted. If yeah. you have a dominant heel champion, that will make the show a lot better because you can have faces fight for it. Okay. Right. I, I, I would love, you know, you what? Get, it's, it's, it's a science. You, uh, as far as pay-per-views go, you get more money when it's a heel champion. You know, going against a face who wants the belt. If it's a face going against a heel, you you know, there's not much more intrigue in that because you, I mean, you don't want us not being smart fans. You know, I mean, you don't want the heel to, you know, uh, what's what am I saying? I've lost my I've lost my train of thought. That's why Christian and... should have kept the belt. I, I Absolutely, totally agree with you. you get more money with a face chasing after the title than you do. With, you know, him already having the title and a heel Cause, doing it. Cause everybody... That's not necessarily true. No, not necessarily. If you're not, if you're not two a words. Fi- no, WrestleFan, two words. Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, Hulk Hogan made a lot of money for that a was, lot of that was And that was 20 years ago. But these days, like, they get more... The, it, it's bigger when they have John Cena building and scraping and clawing and getting over all the obstacles to WrestleMania. I mean, how many WrestleManias has he had the belt going in? Not many. Yeah, exactly. Not... Exactly. Because it's a bigger thing for, for... And how many times besides the last one has he, you know, beat the champion? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Actually, not and many. The last he's only besides... won the belt twice at... He's only won the belt twice at Mania. No, he's won it three times. Or at least three times. He went from Miz. No. He went from uh, JBL. He... He won, no, he, JBL. he won in that triple threat with Big Show and Edge. He didn't... All right, now, but he went All in. Right, yeah. He won it from Batista. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He won it from Batista, and he won it from JBL. That's why, retained, that's why. And he retained once. Okay, the one with Batista, that's why at Elimination Chamber, uh, he had to drop the belt to Batista. Because Cena, at, going in as the champion against Batista, would not draw as much money as Batista having the belt going in against Cena. Then how do you... And then you have the anomaly that is CM Punk and John Cena. Yeah, no, so. that's why it ended with uh, Alberto Del the Rio getting it because yeah. you're like, oh, somebody's got to get it from this guy, and you'll have it. Looks like John Cena is going to go after him. They're yeah. saying, man, I think PG's done after the promos we saw last. You night. got you guys. PG has been it, it, PG that hasn't the nail really on changed. Time. Okay, it's just very it's very relaxed. We're allowed we're allowed more colorful language. No, that's really true, PG. but I've heard Linda's planning on running for Senator, Senate again, so we might <laughs> have never know. Down. <laughs> see, we'll see how long this will enjoy it while we no, can, but guys. See, you guys, you guys, what you guys don't get is when Linda when Linda was running, mm-hmm. WWE was not a PG product. Okay, it was a G product. Okay, it was rated G. <laughs> Are we going to get into the nuances no, of PG I'm just versus saying. G? I I'm mean, no, even no, every no. PG-13 movie has, you know, either a titty or a fuck in it. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that when when WWE was TV PG in like 2003, 2004, it had a lot of the racy angles, a lot yeah. of the violence and stuff like that. Which, which, which now, now, now is something coming... Now yeah. something's coming to my mind. No, no. I, Raw, Raw and everything's been TV PG up until... The last couple of years, or TV this, TV fourteen for the for the whole time. Lunch, especially Lunchbox, the Lunchbox mentioned Linda running again. I'm really just imagining some idiot politician that she's running against that doesn't know anything about wrestling using CM Punk's promos as part of his campaign. Well, that's going to happen. I mean, they already have like people on oh, stupid Fox and yeah. Friends saying because because this this product uh, does what it does with women that uh, uh, that. That Linda McMahon's a misogynist or something, and well, it, I I know, mean, it was I, so idiotic. It was completely stupid. They, I mean, I you, agree. You, it's very you have stupid. how many hours of of, uh, what of the fuck wrestling is? Yeah, I mean, you know how many but, hours of, of of fake violence you know going on? 
uh, no. that, that you can I've, pull any clip I've, and be like, really? This is the person we want representing our kids. You know, I mean, it, it, you're just, you do. Well, you like know what? That. This is, these are the same people who, you know, still blame Columbine on video games. Exactly. It's just so Fuck idiotic. those motherfuckers. A distasteful just, wrestling just, angle pales in comparison wanna, to what comes out of most politicians' closets. I, yeah. That's I wanna true. See, I want to see the person that she's going against use some of the CM Punk promos or, you know, try to contact CM Punk to have him speak <laughs> or something, and I will laugh. I think that'll be a little bit of the line. Okay, so... A little bit of the line there. Go ahead. So, uh, I don't know about you guys, hmm. but, uh, when Chachi Del Rios wakes up in the morning, I think to myself, Chachi of the Rivers 3, what are you gonna do today? And you know what I think? I say to myself, Chachi, I think today I'm gonna beat Rey Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> was what? that not a great promo? That was or great, what? and he did it, and it was great. I don't want to get somebody called this out the other night. He went and did what he was gonna say. He said he was gonna do. He didn't bullshit it. He beat him clean. Yeah, it was a. I saw the last half. Of it was a clean victory. It looked like a clean match. It was a great match. Yep. And then like Cena, Cena comes out and t- calls him a scumbag. No, he and calls not earning him, his belt. Seriously, he calls him a scumbag because of the way that he got the belt at SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. which, which, Punk which said in Triple his promo, H, I don't blame Alberto Del Rio. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah which, like, Punk I didn't did blame Alberto Del Rio, which was awesome. Which you don't, because like Triple H says, that's said, the point. That's the point of Money in the Bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, Let's see, you know, what I think is going to happen. Hmm. I I think um, Kevin Nash is going to be revealed to be hired by Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, he's cashed no. out with Alberto Del Rio. I think he's going to be Alberto's new bodyguard, and then we're going to have a tag team situation where Punk and Cena have to team up against Del Rio and Nash. <laughs> I I thought so. I got cut the it cut out for a second there. Really? Do you really? Th- I've heard this elsewhere that, that people are saying Nash is going to be Del Rio's bodyguard. Fucking really? Mm. Do you think Nash would agree to that? See, my yeah. whole thing. Why not? The, the shit that he's talked about to you know people like uh, what fucking he talked shit about like Wade Barrett and Sheamus and shit like that on um, you know shoot interviews and shit. You really think he's gonna you know actually agree to do this? He's gonna, he's gonna, yeah, yeah, man, he's gonna fucking rehash the, he's gonna be, he's gonna be like Shawn Michaels all over again, man, but now he's Mexican Shawn Michaels, man. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be Diesel, Mexican Shawn Michaels, man, it's gonna be just I, like but, the old times. My whole but, thing was... Okay, so, oh, no, Chachi, go ahead, Chachi. Chachi, go ahead. Yeah, my whole, my whole theory was that it was, uh, John Laronitis or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, I, I I was thinking that it was actually going to turn out that it was him who text, them. text Nash to come in and yeah, take well, them both this out. This whole text thing is yeah. Okay, shit. hold on. No, no, no. It's, there's, a, there's a chance it's Laurinaitis. It's got to be Stephanie, though. Because when Punk saw Stephanie in the back, oh. and she said, what did she say? What did she say? Like, good thing, or... You know, what did she, she said something about that. You won't shake my hand and, and he's like, I know where no, your no. hand's been or. No, 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 I mean, no, I mean, people get what they deserve. I mean, wrong. Oh, people get what they deserve. Yeah, you're right. You're people right. get what they deserve. I'm like, it's fucking you. No, it's you know totally what? Fucking you. This is, this is fantastic because. And it's gonna, and it's gonna start, it's gonna start another feud between Triple H and Stephanie and no one's uh... gonna fucking care. No, no, no. What trip, what, what WWE has done is WWE has created Clue. <laughs> Plants and pet. So wait, it was Stephanie in the locker room with Triple H's cell phone. <laughs> wow. Because I thought it might have been Ricardo Rodriguez in the parking lot with a tire iron. <laughs> I mean, well, I feel one hundred percent positive this is going to CM Punk Triple H. Does anybody agree with that? I think I think it I could. I think it could. it could. And this is this is the thing I learned last night. CM Punk does not need the title to <laughs> no, 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 do no. his shit. No. CM Punk just and needs a microphone. Be... That's yeah. all CM Punk needs. He needs his pipe bomb. <laughs> it was Colonel Mustard <laughs> in the rectory with a Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> Good use of the word rectory. Uh, you know, it might have been Randy Orton in the back with a Bella Twin. Oh, geez. Wait, that's a different game. Oh, of can I talk about the Bella Twins for a second? Yeah, what's nope. up? 
past. Of, did you notice that one of them looks less and less like the other one? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Thank you! <laughs> thank you! They used to like, look kind of sort of similar. Now one of them looks the same, and the other one, just, it, I don't know what happened. She just, no, that's not a person. <laughs> the twin. Listen, did one of the not, twins get plastic okay, surgery? And it sucks. What it Listen, looks and, like. it, and it sucks that the hot one, the one that I've been praising because the other one looks ugly as hell, she has to go fuck it up with me uh, by going on YouTube and rapping. What? Did anyone see this video? No. Why do you look on YouTube? That's how he it knows history of wrestling. <laughs> YouTube is his history book. <laughs> Yeah, it's There's like a video of, of one like, of the twins. I forgot who, in in uh in just in a hotel room, rapping horribly. Hold on, we're working. And then on I will. I think she, and I think she says fuck at one point during the whole thing. But oh no, she says fuck. You just look at it. Fuck what you I'll, say, Bella twin. Fuck what I you know, say. Like, fuck what you say. Uh, um, Bobby F J Town would like to talk you about Sam Carla. San Cara? Sans Cara. Sans Cara. Yeah, yeah that was, I did watch. Oh, don't, don't you, know, you mean Punico? Who, yeah, we, I did watch that. Who the fuck is not going to notice that's not Sin Cara? He's no, like, no, no, I think no, that's going to be the angle, they're, though. They're building that. He's, it's a thing. Oh, it's going to be a thing? It's going to be a oh, thing, okay, and then right. they're going to have a Sin Cara versus Sin Cara feud, which uh, I'm not such a I great idea. They better bring back think. Million Dollar Man to, to do that. No, I like I really that idea, don't care. Actually. What the, what? I really I like the idea a lot because, because you can say this like you can say this is a guy from Mexico who had feud of Sin Cara in the past. Okay. And okay. when Sin Cara uh, was out with injury, he wanted to, he felt overlooked by WWE because he wasn't brought in with the big goofla that Sin Cara was brought in. So he decided to steal okay. Sin Cara's it, this the whole thing. I don't care because that's the best thing Car has ever done. Anything in the ring. <laughs> Nobody knows. Although I think the best part of angle of this has what Botch Spot did, where Triple H is actually under the Sin Cara mask. <laughs> <laughs> but other than I, that, I, I, my opinion is the fans won't even buy an established character like Kane fighting himself, let alone Sin Cara, who's been on WWE TV for about three months. <laughs> Seems a little, little ass backwards to me. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I agree. Hey, that was, that was Festus, all right? That was Luke Gallows before he got off the <laughs> oh, Wow. Luke Gallows. That's, that's the guy right there. All right. I, I want to touch a little bit on a couple of these news items here. Uh, no. we, we had some wellness policy issues this week. Not us as a show. We Wrestle, did. Wrestle fan Hilarious is fun. Hilarious one. Uh, yeah, pretty Hilarious. funny. Pretty funny. First of all, uh, let's go with the less likely one first. Now, we don't Which is fan... less likely? No, 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 the no, story no. made me so happy. Okay. Mike <laughs> Kyoto. Referee yeah. Mike Kyoto has been hey. suspended... On behalf of the wellness policy. I, I oh, really? I, listen, I always knew that fucker was on the juice. Why? I always knew. Uh, Mike why? Kyoto is gas, man. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm shaking really? my head. Really? Mike when, Kyoto? When Damn does that you, ever Mike happen? Uh, he's suspended for 30 days, so I mean, it's pretty, I mean, he has what, a first offense or something, right? Uh, he, he's the re- he's su- 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 supposedly the first referee to be suspended for the wellness policy. So of course he was. I, what this <laughs> so what else to be is fair, juicing? To be fair, like, I bet Danny Davis was juicing back in the day. Oh, I'm sure he was. Thank Come you, on, Dad's Danny Davis. That's why he was so. Dangerous. I bet they haven't tested Triple H, who was a referee on Sunday. And and then the other one that got let go. Uh, why well, not like a wellness policy suspension? Tough enough, Winder Andy. Silent <laughs> tears. The silent rage. The silent rage. He was all like, I'm going to start I have a very right. serious question Inject about fire. <laughs> <laughs> What's very that, Mike? serious question. Yeah. Um, do you think Andy cried when he injected the needle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> silent, silently. Silently to himself. And Bob Bobby FJ, instead of a piss test, they tested his tears. His what? 
His peers. <laughs> his peers. Oh God. No, Bobby yeah. said they tested his That's peers. horrible. That I mean yeah. I mean for for all they put in that show. He should disqualify. And they went they went this guy. He should you know. be disqualified. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they want to mention it. They don't want to mention, hey, we got this tough enough winner. You guys invested how many weeks for and had this ratings and we did a big thing with Stone Cold and Vince McMahon, mind you. And now this this guy is never getting out of the doghouse at this point. That's why I even take a drink one guy on television because of his family, and then he gets this huge opportunity to run provide for them and he does steroids good job well, jackass oh uh, it's i mean we're <laughs> presuming steroids paid. we're presuming steroids but it could be other things you know i mean it, it, they yeah. don't just test for steroids uh they don't test for weed i don't think but if they're on no, other they drugs do. they do now they do yeah, test they, for weed but it's only a that. fine it's only a, it's yeah, a it's fine, only fine. so we know it's not that uh but man Man, yeah. so, oh my god, that that is that is tough, and uh, I don't know. They, I mean, it, do they have a wellness policy for tough enough? Like during the show, you think? Uh, you think I that? Hope so. You think that's a thing? I mean, probably. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I posted the video in the chat. If Sword wants to bring it okay, up, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll bring it. Up. Oh, of, of Nikki Bella rapping. Uh, give me a minute to do that though. Um, um and, I think and, you have to listen. In to other that. news, did you guys see that you can buy? Uh, you know, this has always been a thing. We go to live shows and we're like, ah, we're missing the commentary. That's half the story, right? Well, mm-hmm. at SummerSlam, you are able to buy. Uh, WWE announced a SummerSlam commentary track. Basically, it was this little FM uh, receiver. And I guess afterwards they could take it with them, and it's still an FM radio. And they got That's the com- awesome. and they got the commentary live during the show, sitting in their seats. That went on. Who the Listen, fuck won- who the fuck wanted to come? No, well, okay, okay. Well, then again, uh, it, they cost fifteen dollars each, and they're available Not in the concourse. Now, well, wait a minute. Well, okay, as we know, it was. But look how they advertise this play-by-play commentary. Um, it, it, it it's gonna fans can tens can listen to the Super SummerSlam television broadcast featuring the likes of Hall of Famers Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross, as well as Michael Cole Booker T and Josh Matthews. No, if mm. if I read that, I was like, oh, Jim Ross is gonna be right. on tonight. I put my fifteen <laughs> bucks down, right, and then I asked for it back. Yes, um, <laughs> as soon as I, I found out that Booker good old Jr. wasn't commentating, yeah, yeah, I'd be. Uh, there was actually pissed. a tweet last night I saw around that was like, if it, I want to change the channel and this is a pay-per-view because of the commentary. Yeah, right. And that, that was, it was, it got bad. <laughs> guys, so guys, guys, there is a bigger controversy scandal uh, over the commentary. It's why, God. Where the fuck was Hugo Savinovich? <laughs> what the fuck? In the Spanish announce table? Yeah. You know. Yes! Hugo Savinovich was not available. Wow. wow, I can't believe you know his name. That's impressive. <laughs> wow. Sword, sword. Is he Carlos like- Cabrera and Hugo Savinovich have been a staple in the Spanish broadcasting community for over 15 years. That's Where the true. fuck was he? Is I he demand to know. Either, Did he get busted from the wellness dead, policy? Okay. Is he like the, the Jim Ross, the Latino Jim Ross of some sort? Yes. Yeah, basically? Yes. <laughs> Riz R- R- says in the chat room, he took drugs with Kyoto. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he got it that, from. That, that, oh, that's the that's next horrible. line. If a if a announcer gets caught in the wellness, I was thinking policy. that too. It's like this week, Josh Matthews has been suspended thanks to the wellness. But what was he taking? Like throat drops? I I don't understand that. Like <laughs> no, like Josh Matthews drops? is a cokehead. Everybody knows uh, this. That's why he had that nosebleed that one time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think Booker one T. Note, he's, he's a little too sorry, excited Josh, about that Alberto Del Rio. No, he's even more excited. I mean, have you heard him out there? Oh, man, this is a great Divas match, but I really wish that Alberto Del Rio could win the Divas title. What the hell? <laughs> what was that? And they didn't like that either. Uh, <laughs> that was... Skype says, fuck what you I, say. That's why Skype says, fuck what you say. I love that. Uh, I love <laughs> No, how, you got uh, out there. Booker you got T. there, what? and it dropped you. It was tremendous. Um, All right, can I redo it? No, yo, you I got it. How... You got it. No, let him redo it because uh, it was good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I just redo it anyway? Yeah, yes. sure. <laughs> oh, man, Cole, this is a really great Divas title match here. I'm really enjoying it, but I really wish that Alberto Del Rio was a woman so I could see him win the Divas title, too. <laughs> I, love, I love how Booker T, when, whenever a heel is like going on the advantage, I love how Booker T wants every match to stop. Yeah. He's just like, the ref, the ref should really think about stopping this match. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why were you such a wimp there, Booker T? Can I, point out, can I point out the fact that JR 
uh, busted on Michael Cole last night during on Twitter. No, uh, what match was it? Oh, on Raw. Yeah, yeah on Raw. Oh shit. <laughs> and well, 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 no, no, it was it was the uh, the Swagger match. Okay. He every other word out of his mouth was vintage. Yeah, mm-hmm. every he, other he, word wait, out of Cole's ma- or, no, uh, out of Jay, mouth. No, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. That was worth it. A little Can bit. I point out that we live in a world where Booker T is an announcer, <laughs> uh, and we're all just cool with that. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Know. Booker T is I'm broken out sure. his just a DNA regular English thing in our lives. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with it until they put him on pay-per-view. Who the hell thinks it's a good idea to put him I on mean, pay-per-view? I mean, I appreciated I'm Booker saying. T when he started out. I mean, I, okay, I like this. I mean, you know, Macho because Man, you Macho was, Man was fun. Thing. Roddy Piper was a pretty cool thing. Mick Foley was tremendous when he was out there. I okay. love the old wrestlers getting in there. It's way better than than Josh Matthews and 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 uh, and Michael Cole on SmackDown. Listen, but I, I'll it's gone you... downhill. The match we were watching uh, that uh, WrestleFan and I were watching, where he went on about his WrestleMania check for the entire time <laughs> and how he could retire on it. It was it was ridiculous. Yeah, okay. it was that it was mania ridiculous. check. Okay, listen. Josh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you Piper. Okay. And I'll give you everyone else you named. Okay. I will take away Macho Man. Why? Why? And I will take Why away Booker T. Oh, come on. They don't talk. Doing. They don't I'm speak sorry. English. Wrestle. Okay, I'm sorry. WrestleMania 9 with Jim Ross, Macho Man, and Bobby the Brain. Bobby Man. Pass. Spectacular. Pass? That was Pass. absolutely no, tremendous. No, no. Pass. Chachi, fuck what you say. Hey. Yeah, fuck you know, what? know what? Hold on. Macho Man's breaking into the studio. Fuck what you say, Chachi. Oh, oh. Yeah. There he and is. now you're a That's zombie, a which means I'm going to kick you in the teeth. Oh. Because you're, you're, you're dead. Too soon. Too soon. No, it's not. Too if soon. If he can bust out the voice, I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Bobby? Anyhow. Bobby in the chat room. Bull, knock a, knock a, knock a, knock a, no. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, Bull Nakano. Fuck yeah. Fucking wrestling <laughs> on Blaze. That was the shit. Did, did Macho Man ever say shit. that? No. I, but yeah, no. I don't know. No. I, I take away Macho Man. I take away Dusty Rhodes, as Riz pointed out in the the chat room. Okay. And oh I, come and, on! And I take away Booker T because if you cannot speak English properly, I do not want to <laughs> listen to you commentate a match. Really? How can Dusty Macho Rhodes? Man not speak English properly? Then you need to take out Mongo JBL, McMichael. JBL come on, he was a good take out Mongo McMichael. That's that was that guy was rough. Um, I don't know about that. JBL mainly just got on my nerves. No, oh, that, I thought JBL was decent. He had. Towards the end, he was getting really good. Towards the end, he was better. When he was, like, playing yeah. with uh, uh, fucking yeah. Hornswoggle, that was all right. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was like, and there are you... there are 14 to 15 <laughs> leprechauns under that ring at any given time. There's a whole community of leprechauns under the WWE ring that travels with them from city to city. Somehow, nobody noticed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, remember, remember when uh, JBL used to always rip on The Miz? Yeah. yeah. Like, he would... Every- Remember I watched one used thing to rip I, on I the Miz? From, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, everybody ripped on the Miz. Yeah, yeah. I did not. I did not rip on the Miz. Yeah, I've been a Miz fan since he started. All right, guys. I want to touch base on this. Hey, uh, you know, we haven't really. Uh, um, you know, I. There is a question TNA's in been, the chat. Ron. Is there a question in the chat? I don't know. It says they have a question. The, I was waiting for it to actually show up, but it hasn't yet. I have a question. Okay. Uh, well, while we're waiting for that to come Boy. up, TNA, <laughs> TNA, another reason to oh, not be yes. happy. Uh, Jimmy Yang says he still hasn't been paid by the company, and an office oh, yeah. worker called him unprofessional. Now, didn't he show up during well, that month they were leading up to uh, Destination? Yeah, he was in one of the ex- he was in one of the X Division matches. Okay, yeah, he was the Flying Elvis. The Flying Elvis, yeah, because that was his old thing, and that's well, okay, and and the thing that Yang said is. One, he hasn't gotten the money for it, and one or two, they tried to get him, or they gave him a check, but the check bounced. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. How does a company so, like TNA have a check bounce? That's that. I have really no impossible. idea. I mean, it's they spent Derek too Bischoff's much nose. money covering up Jeff Jarrett's uh, fake Mexican title. Oh. Paying Jeff Hardy's legal mm. fees. These are all really, uh, I think, authentic <laughs> and legitimate reasons. Right. <laughs> that's, that's right. And that's why Jesse kneels on food stamps. Oh, by the way, guys, you have to be prepared. Matt Hardy says he's working out and training for a comeback. Oh, oh good. good. Of course he is. Good for him. Oh, okay. Matt Hardy, uh, just, I want to. No, no, no. Quick. No, we're not going to get off on it. I just want to say it. Don't say anymore. I'm not that. getting off on it. No, I, I always not. Can I? 
Can I just read the tweet that he said? It's really short. No, I just want to read no. the... <laughs> no, let him go. Come on. <laughs> okay. It says, quote, I'm ready. It's time for me to get back in the ring. I'm going to train my ass off and get ready for the day wherever it may be. Preach. Wherever it may be? Is he not employed anymore? Yeah, but uh, really, is... preach? Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like... Bit girl. He thinks he's Bit girl. Bit girl? Okay. He thinks he's Ginny. <laughs> What's that? All of his Kashi? tweets are going to be followed with, that's church. Uh, ask, ask a legitimate question and we'll answer it. What? What? Oh, this is uh, WrestleMania 30? Yeah. Uh, ma- uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. you know what? If Rock Cena is the main event of WrestleMania 30, that's extremely long term booking. That is, yeah. We thought it was bad going to, what is it, 28 this year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, that's, that's, uh, it is yeah. a long booking. Yeah. So, that's in Square Garden. Um, if it's WrestleMania 30, uh, it, here's how it's going to go. Uh, Rock is going to win the first one this year. Because he's promoting, right. uh, Fast and the Furious 7. Yes. Uh, no, 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 let me, no, let me, let me finish. Okay. Uh, WrestleMania 28, Rock is gonna win. G.I. Joe 3. Uh, WrestleMania 29, Cena's gonna win. <laughs> okay, in the rubber match. Yes. Okay. And then Rock, <laughs> WrestleMania 30, uh, CM Punk's gonna come in and GTS both of them and steal whatever they're fighting for. Which will be, I, Rock's residuals I from G.I. Joe 3. Right. Yeah, on, mm-hmm. on a pool. Yes. Uh, yeah, $12. Yeah, on a pool. <laughs> $12. <laughs> Inside, <laughs> Inside a Hell in a Cell, <laughs> um, Hell in a Cell, and dogs, 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 dogs. around ringside. Dogs. Yeah, actually, somebody, like is somebody going to get hung, dogs. get lynched from the uh, top of the Hell in a Cell again? Okay, no, he ap- the, he no? apologized <laughs> and said WrestleMania 28. Yeah, sorry, the rag out of you, but it was just having fun with you there. <laughs> um, now next year, I I don't know, I. They kind of have to. Dude, give it to I still know. They kind of have to give it to Cena. Yeah, probably. But it, I mean, I, it all depends on if it's for the title or not. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it all comes down true. to whether or not it's for a belt. Yeah. So because there's no way uh, if it's if Jir, if Cena's the champion going in, there's no way in hell Rock's winning that match. No, not I'm at thinking, all. I'm thinking. Um, okay. Because you, because you have to have you have to defend the title once every thirty days. Rock hasn't been there in like three months. <laughs> exactly. Unless he's just got this scheduled mm-hmm. stint where he's not doing a movie. Hey guys, remember Chris Masters? I know he was fired last no. week. You don't already? We've already I forgotten have a about him. Recollection of a that fain name. recollection. I remember his well, dancing pack. Well, he was at. Uh, I remember him being in the SummerSlam commercial. He was in the SummerSlam it's fan so access. Well, not in it. Kind of in the parking lot, hanging out with the fans. But uh, <laughs> you know, this is. Yeah, you know, good for him though, because he went fan access in the parking lot, yes. Um, and he met with fans and he had a nice mob, and I think he mentioned how he didn't go in the next day because he was like, Yeah, considering how what happened in the parking lot, what would have happened if I bought a ticket and walked in? Right. You know, I mean it yeah. would have distracted from stuff. I think it was only fair that he didn't. But he's got a really good video up here, and that guy looks like WrestleFan. Wow. You know, stand up <laughs> it's a it's a a stand-up move by him, by yeah. not buying a ticket and yeah. trying to exactly. get to the exactly. Well, I mean, he all... knows that you can get fired and rehired in that company like a billion yeah. times, so, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, he's going to keep his mouth shut. I mean, this is him. He's My thing is, a, he's I find a... it hilarious that they let him be at Fan Access, but they wouldn't let Molina in on Raw. Well, they didn't let him well, in the Fan Access. He's in the parking lot out on the street on the <laughs> sidewalk. And, I know, but they didn't. Yeah, hanging Molina out, hanging has still out been with the fake macho man, Morrison. mind you. I mean, yeah, Molina was trying to get into the building. But, I mean, this is him saying, hey, I'm still here. I'm, a, You know, life goes on even though I'm not in WWE. Much like we saw those videos from Mr. Anderson, Mr. Kennedy, which were fantastic and set up for, like, hey, I want to wanna, I want to know what he does next. And we maybe watched the first couple of weeks of TNA. Uh, but <laughs> still, I mean, the, but those were really good. Those videos he did were really good. I mean, this is something that, that's got people's attention. I, this is more exposure, I think, for Chris Masters than any week on Superstars. Um, yeah. and, and whatever he does next, whether he goes back, to, I think he was doing NWA Hollywood back in the day and and stuff like that i mean this this makes him relevant again in the long run i'm upset that we never got to see the epic confrontation for the Aaron championship between chris master that and is Zachary. true he did call him out but although now that he is on the internet maybe that'll definitely happen that is true he's I'd like to i'm see on that. the internet too so um it, 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 people come on chris masters i mean it's so ridiculous so we, and everybody's behind him i love it i love it i mean look at this crowd of people Oh, that's hey, look at this crowd of people surrounding him here. This is this is insane. But um, but yeah. So there's that, and he has actually does have a plug. Let me see at the end here. If to I be can... fair, he is giving away free autographs. 
Yeah, free, I'd imagine if he was charging for autographs, yeah, the crowd would not yeah. be as large. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you know, they're mobbing him. You know, whatever. He's talking to some Mexican guy. I don't know what's going on here. I'm trying to get his, his plug out here. Masterpiece Theater, coming soon. Get so, it? Yeah. Uh, get it? Uh, near uh, you. I get it. There you go. I see there what he go. did there. So, I mean, I, maybe he's taking a cue from somebody like Zack Ryder, and he's going to do his own thing. Uh, uh, yeah, which, you know, Can you just point did. out that uh, hmm? Ken Kennedy mm-hmm. started it first? Did he start it first? Was he the first one to do it? He, I think, honestly, yeah. and I hate to say it, no, I really Matt hate Hardy. to say it. Yeah, Matt Hardy kind of started the whole yeah, thing Matt Hardy was with this really Matt bad. Hardy show when he was off and... And he's selling it on DVDs. I'm sorry, he is. Who did it before him? I oh, just refuse no. to acknowledge Matt Hardy was the first. Okay, for anything. okay. Well, no, see, Presuming see, Matt, Matt Hardy, Hardy is, is like the vapor. Beta Max. Matt Hardy is like the Beta Max, <laughs> and Zack Ryder and Cole Cabana are the Blu-ray. You know, I got you. They've only you. improved on the format. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's cool. That's cool. Um, and uh, that's all the news I got for these guys. And we just lost our guest again. <laughs> that's like funny. Okay. Okay. Of course. Uh, uh, the roster, 80% of the roster for the new wrestling video game that's released. Is it? Okay, is there anything of note there? Vader, Demolition, Whoa. were both announced for the game. Um, okay. Let's see. I also heard through different internet sites that Michael Cole and Trish Strass are both going to be playable. Okay, okay. That's oh, God. Only if he's like in that horrible getup. No, 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 wait. Is his outfit going to be the, the, the wrestling singlet? Or the Triple H to get up, I wonder. I'm assuming the singlet, but I bet the Triple H one will be downloadable. Downloadable content. or unlockable, that's cool. That's really yes. cool. And there um, are, they, 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 uh, the one thing they didn't announce uh, to uh, the stars that have been fired recently. Okay. Um, but it was real that they, uh, Vladimir Kozlov and uh, I think Chavo Guerrero are going to be in the game. And that makes sense. It's really close. I mean, it, it, it's within yeah. that time. And the other really thing was they weren't going to announce it during the big uh, reveal since they were fired. But you know, exactly, exactly. And, Just and other guys, other guys have been announced: uh, Ricky Steamboat, Arn Anderson, uh, the Road Warriors will be in. I'm it. Excited for Kevin Nash. I'm excited, Kevin Nash. I'm excited for Arn Anderson. What's that? What's that? Russell fan. Uh, I was I'm excited when they announced that Arn Anderson was going to be in the game. Yeah, that was a surprise. Fucking Arn Anderson, yeah. Yeah, what's going on? I hope this means Arn Anderson's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame team. I think it's a little. Oh, wait, did they do the Horsemen like as a whole at one point? No, I, I, no. Okay, that was a, that horsemen. was a dream I had. Okay, I got that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, You're on, you know, Mark seventy five. What? Arn Anderson, Arn Anderson is the shit. Yeah, he was not. A, yeah, okay, he was a lackey in some points, but he was the best <laughs> lackey up. ever. You know, I mean, he was his right hand man in that. He well, was, dude, he was dude, the guy that got Kevin Nash up. was a lackey. Mm-hmm. Triple H was a lackey at one point. Exactly. Yeah, a exactly. lot of people only know Arn Anderson is a lackey. You weren't paying attention. There was the Brain yes. Busters with uh uh. Tully, Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the other thing. I, <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing that reminded me. Uh, uh, Mike, you sent this along, and uh, we actually, I, I saw the tweet was first from uh, uh, at Shireman, uh, Coach Shireman for some of you out there. Uh, let, me, let me see if we can get this in a readable format, but there's this poster going around called the Titanic Taxon- Taxonomy of Wrestler Names. Um, and you see, most of they all uh, go from professions, animals, places of origin, or physical or metaphysical attributes. Like, let's see, let's see, a profession. And we have warriors, the warlord, the road warriors, ultimate warrior, the dingo warrior. Uh, law enforcement, we have the... By the way, the dingo warrior and the ultimate warrior are the same person. For same those guy. who didn't know. For those who don't know, you know. Um, although, they, it also, and it crosses over to canids, which is a dingo. <laughs> Moon dogs, yellow dog, pit bull, pit bulls. I mean, it's really the dog face gremlin, Rick Steiner. This is pretty cool, and I guess this is a poster you can buy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I have I have one uh, in my cube at work, actually. Really nice. Mm-hmm. That might be worth it for the studio right there. So uh, thanks, 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 Mike and uh, Charmin for passing that along. No problem. No yeah, problem. It's like it's like your fan mail for the week. <laughs> um. Well, you know, you know, when I find cool things in the air and I like to pass them along. I like cool internet things. All right, guys, I think that's time for, for the wrap up and learn what all of you learned from wrestling for this week. 
Uh, let's go ahead around uh, around the horn here. Mad Mike, what did you learn for wrestling this week? All right. Um, I I learned I learned two things from wrestling this week. And you uh, seen a mark? I have touched a girl, and your girlfriend loved it actually. So did your mother. Um, Boom. Anyway. <laughs> Stop um, playing with the chat room. I, I learned, <laughs> I learned stop, the stop, chat be, room. stop being the trolls after uh, 10 57 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time. <laughs> wow. Okay. Continue. Um, I learned two things from wrestling this week. I learned uh, one, that TNA still doesn't know what who they're pushing at all. Because. Kurt Angle is aligning himself with Hulk Hogan, but he's not with the mortal, so it doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But TNA still is kind of struggling with what they're doing as a whole. Because they don't even have like a number one contender for for Angle's title, so, since Sting is going to be fighting Ric Flair. They're, they're just completely a mess. And yeah. I think this Bound for Glory series is hurting them more than it's helping them. Yeah. Because it's going on too long, and they can't build a proper feud. Uh, yeah, and, and like I said, the comments I made last night on Twitter about TNA are more like, you know, it is a interesting show to sit down and watch, kind of as a piece, as just, I sat down and watched wrestling for tonight, and this entertained me. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to make sense. They explain whatever I'm supposed to know, and I just kind of take it at face value. I mean, you start digging into TNA, yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And, you know... Whatever. Well, TNA actually it hasn't been entertaining for me. I've been forced to watch the Jersey Shore. Ooh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been, I've been driven be to the Jersey wow. Shore because TNA has been that unentertaining. It to drove him all the way from the Bronx to the Jersey Shore. <laughs> the Jersey Shore. Congratulations. Oh, Which is ironically man. in Italy. Yeah. Uh, DJ Lunchbox, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, boy, that's a good question because I, I had it and then I lost it at least twice. um i learned uh i learned that uh shit that's tough that's a tough that's a toughie oh i also learned scott bay was gonna be on tna this week oh my god oh yeah i remember now yeah it's not Scott Bayo. It's not about Scott, Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo is 48 and irrelevant. Do you, do you want us to come back to you? <laughs> no, no, no. I got it now. I got it. Okay, now. okay. Um, there was a. I wanted to make this announcement earlier in the show, but uh, it slipped my mind when we got into all the like Kevin Nash talk and everything. But um, it's 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 a bit of a confession on my part. I when when Kevin Nash like was in the WWE as Diesel and everything like that and he was getting his push his his big title push that was you know everybody said was you know awful i was i was a young child and i enjoyed it i liked diesel when he was a face cuz i hated Shawn michaels at the time yeah um i really ow oh, man diesel yeah i, was, I fucking loved diesel i thought he was great and uh, he was cool. He's Big Daddy cool. He was the cool he was guy. Big da- you big yeah. fucking Diesel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big boot. Yeah. <clears throat> Super. So sure. um, I learned that we will soon have a return to the glory days of Diesel, and I personally can't wait for it. Also, um, not only is Just for Men hair coloring a sponsor <laughs> for WWE, they also give out their product very freely. I miss the Silver Fox. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Wrestle fan. Well, actually, uh, to, to go on that quick. Um, no, on the no, this is relevant to what. Yeah, that's Duquette. fine. That's fine. Yeah. On the on the Legends of Wrestling NWO uh, gimmick on the WWE on demand, mm-hmm. he actually said uh, Nash actually said that Vince McMahon wouldn't come back unless he dyed his hair black. I I believe huh. that. I do believe that actually. That's so, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wrestle fan. What'd you learn? Oh, 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 diggity. <laughs> I learned in wrestling this week, we got a, you know, WWE in particular, but wrestling in general has had a history of having some very interesting characters, you know, people like, you know, Dunk the Clown, you know, uh, the Goon, uh, Repo Man, to name a few. However, Classics. we have never had, we have never had a hermaphrodite as a professional wrestler. <laughs> and we, if we, if you How want to see that, go contact, that, go contact, go contact 
former uh, ECW and WWE star Johnny Swinger, because he said in an interview that he pitched an idea to Vince McMahon for him to be a hermaphrodite and would do a, uh, quote, I would do a program with Trish Stratus and win the women's title, then go against Cena. I had angles written to go against Trish, Kane, and Cena. I wanted to go to the top. I wasn't going to pitch an idea to wrestle the first match of the night. I wanted to make money and be in the main event. I own the character. I have a patent for it, so if it's used on TV, I'll get paid either way. A patent? I don't think a um, patent applies here. Wrestle fan, uh, wrestle fan. Why the fuck are you paying any attention to Johnny Swinger? No, dude, it was a that was kind of an interesting story, actually. And, and that may, was very it may be a story about he how he insane he is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and other than that, and other than that, I think we all learned that Russell fan uh, gloms onto the word hermaphrodite in news stories. Okay, moving on to Chachi. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, uh, I learned I learned a couple things. Uh, okay, I'm ready for college. You can't charge me fifteen dollars for an in arena commentary okay. that does not include good when, old Jr. When I can bring it up on Justin TV on my phone for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> or um, that when Alberto Del Rio wakes up in the morning, <laughs> he asks himself what he's going to do, <laughs> and then he answers himself with beat Rey Mysterio. <laughs> uh, yes. And I would yes. also... Oh, wait, guys, guys, guys. I just got a text from my sister. No. It said, oh, my God, Kevin Nash, what WTF? I thought he was dead. <laughs> 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 All right, Chachi, finish your thing. And yeah, because I was previously unaware of this Scott Bayo situation, um, I would like to take this moment because we all know everyone listens to this show. Absolutely, everybody, everyone, everybody, everywhere. We are ultra rich. Uh, well, I mean, let's look at the facts. What? <laughs> let's look at the facts. All right. Yes. Um, we had a discussion about no one wearing the title anymore. And now everyone is wearing the title. <laughs> Say listen. So everyone listens to the show, <laughs> whether they want to admit Obviously. it or not. Eric Young wears two titles. Right. He does. He takes it to the extreme. <laughs> and you know what? He's a friend of the show. This has to do with TNA. Mm-hmm. So nice segue. But um, I'm taking this opportunity because I was previously unaware of the fact that Scott Bale was going to be on TNA. <laughs> You're um, welcome. Well, welcome, sir. I, Scott Bayo. You old ass motherfucker that just will not go away. I, Chachi, hereby open an issue, an issue, an open challenge to wrestle a match with you. Winner takes Chachi. Uh, I think Scott Bayo would gladly give that away. <laughs> can, can we? Can we get someone? Can we get China? To be the official for that match and call it Jody Refs Chachi. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, come on! Hey, I thought it was good. Oh, I oh, thought it was good. Thank you, Chachi. Thank but, um, you. No, it, no. See, but the whole reason I'm doing that is because I spent 72 hours on Twitter trying to get him to acknowledge and relinquish the Chachi title. <laughs> <laughs> And he wouldn't. He well, didn't even. Wait, was, he didn't even acknowledge you. No, he didn't even respond to me at all. Well, you know what, Chachi? If Eric Young, friend of the show, defeats Scott Bayo, we might be able to contact Eric Young to see if he won the title of Chachi, so he can bequeath it to you. That's true. Bequeath, bequeath, bequeath. But yeah, so uh, I, I, I hereby. Gonna... Yeah, wrestle fan, you'll learn that one in thirteenth grade. All right. I, I hereby issue this <laughs> challenge to Scott Bayo. Me and you, in the ring. Winner takes Chachi. Sucker. Fantastic. All right, to our guest Amok. What did you learn from wrestling this week, sir? Well, from wrestling, I learned that although we typically buy wrestling pay-per-views in anticipation of closure and answers, they almost <laughs> always bring us questions and confusion, uh, like SummerSlam. Now, I understand that sometimes a dangling cause or the start of something new is good for a long-term storyline, but when that's what you get at the end of a major pay-per-view that you just shelled out 50 bucks for, 
it has a tendency to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm not wrong, sir. Okay. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right. And from our chat room, we do have a lot of them in here. Uh, well, I think this is a learn. Uh, Riz says, don't search uh, wrestling hermaphrodite. If you do, put the safe lock on. Uh, <laughs> Bobby FJ Town learned that AON <laughs> women and children are expendable. And also, I don't think that they told Booker T that Sin Cara wasn't himself. He uh, gained muscle mass and was using a whole new moveset, sucka. Um, Maybe his moveset got hacked. He got, he got hacked. Uh, Riz learned that uh, Kevin Nash shouldn't talk on the mic. He's not that good with the pipe bomb. Uh, yeah, it really feels like he can't keep up with Punk, to be honest. Not I mean, many people I mean, can. He, he, was, he was revolutionary in his day when he was breaking down the fourth wall and we lose everybody on Skype because they got pipe bombed. Um, they'll be back. Well, it was great when um, when uh, Nash was like, uh, like he said... Um, you should watch your mouth, and Punk said, you should watch the show. I say what I want. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. All right. Uh, oh, and also, I, I yes. learned one final thing. Miz is a great endorser for Subway. Yes. I don't, I don't know. Weird. And I, really I'll weird. say that. Yeah, that. I thought he was good. I don't know. <laughs> Santino was much better. Uh, I'll take your delicious sandwich, Jerry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mark, hey, tell us, tell us about it. You got a new album coming out, right, buddy? Uh, it's out. It's out. Yeah, it's, uh, came out on the 6th. It's called Asymmetry. It's an EP, five tracks, and it's actually free for download at facebook.com slash amok412. Uh, I got some features on it. Henri Osborne of Gray Skull on Rhyme Sayers Records. Also, Pearl Dragon of Champagne Champagne. So I got some Seattle flavor on it. A couple local guys come up in that as well. So it's free. What do you have to lose? There you go. Go little, check it out. Little gift for the listeners. Hey, thanks for joining us. I hope you had fun. I had a blast, man. Thanks for having me. Excellent. We'll have to do this again sometime. Uh, everybody, hey, it's been the Wrestling May- Mayhem Show. This is uh, episode 283. Uh, if you want to find out more of what we're doing, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Twitter us at Mayhem Show. Uh, any feedback you want to th- throw at us, email us at... Good <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS-09670. You can check us out here every Tuesday. Join us in the chat room. All kinds of new faces I'm seeing pop in here. Of course, Bobby FJ Town, Hot Wheels, Riz, as as we uh, as as we usually see in here. But also we saw a bunch of new names like Clobber in Time, uh, Illinades. Uh, who else was in there? Anybody else that wasn't being a tool? Jeter uh, fan. Jeter, Jeter fan. fan and uh, a whole Half bunch facts. of other people popping in. We like to see the new faces and getting, getting some feedback. You guys have been great all night. Uh, so for the entire crew, this is Sorg signing off. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the